Oh yeah, we're unmuted. Roll credits. Da 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 da. It's X Penguin. It's X Penguin. X Penguin. X Penguin. Yeah. We need that needs to be the intro, man. Not this shit. Hello, everybody! Welcome yeah. to X Penguin, a show that features a toasty that looks like he's on a CRT because, for whatever reason, OBS is like, fuck you, Chromie Key. But also, it's kind of bandy. I love it. I don't know what's happening with it. I'm wearing no trousers, my camera's fucked, and we're five minutes late. So, hey, everybody, how you doing? It's all going well. <laughs> Yeah, I like uh, the extreme, like, uh, like I don't know, fried meme, like deep fried meme thing that you have going on for your like behind you. Camera. Yeah, that's not on purpose. My camera's literally fucked. I don't know if you know this, right? But this that's... camera's literally fucked. That's all it does. It works when I turn it on. It works fine, but at like two frames a second, and then it get it must get warm after like two minutes. Then all of a sudden it fades into this, but then the frame rate gets slightly better. So I'm at like five frames a second now, which is nice. But yeah, it's not on purpose. Okay. I literally don't have money for a new camera. And I'm like, fuck it. I'll just use this one until it dies. I don't fucking care. Um, it just looks like an old security camera. It just like, amazing. Just it looks great, there. yeah? It looks, it looks, it does, it looks good. The thing oh, is, yeah. if I turn and the it lights off, the theme. it's vanished. Yeah, it does. I'm lucky that it broke in the best way possible. It, it, like, it was like, we're broken, but we're also awesome at the same time. So it's all fine. So... I win it's there. The best way to beat bro. <laughs> I, I was I was kind of waiting for Prime Day because I thought I'd get a cheap camera because I use these um these Logitech C920s right and they're fucking great cameras they're really good right they're, they're like they're like as high as you need to go with a webcam before you move on to like a Canon D500 or something you know like a proper camera and uh, they're like sixty pounds so I was like I'm gonna yeah, wait for, yeah I'm gonna wait for a Prime deal and see if they get down to like forty pounds and it didn't happen and I was like you know what I'm just gonna keep using this piece of shit for another few weeks it's fine I don't have loads of money I'm waiting for cameras but yeah broken aesthetic camera suits hex yeah I feel like my whole life is really just a broken webcam Paul it's just I feel like it's like it's it's you know <laughs> it's just like sums me up in whole and the only you know the only thing I would like I would say is when I do fix this. I'm going to replace it with another shitty webcam. So what will probably happen is the video will be correct, but the quality will be worse. So I don't know if it's a double-edged sword, man. I might... <laughs> yeah. I, well, dude, yeah, you should keep this camera just and shoot some around. videos just in this like in this format. Like, you don't even need the filter or whatever. People it's just think you'll have the, the no, deep-fried meme filter people, people already in there. People will literally believe that I've, I'm doing a meme or something. They will literally be under the impression... The, that I'm doing the filter with this. No one will believe it's real. No one's believe, no one. No one. Now I literally had emails that like people like you know uh, you know I don't like the way you're faking a broken camera. Like I literally had the email. And I was like, dude, I don't I don't I don't fake things because I don't organize. Trying things. too hard, hex. Like, trying that production. I don't try it at all. Over the top, man. I don't try it at all. <laughs> how did I break it, offensive polygon? About five thousand hours of video is how I broke it. <laughs> just That's, going hard yeah. forever. I mean, I don't know if you noticed, but sometimes I stream for like 10 hours and shit, right? And that camera, the, all these cameras are on all that time, right? And this one is the oldest camera I own. And it's just got to the point where it's like, you know what, Hex? I'm too tired for this shit. I need out. I need out. So, you know, that's what's happened there. But uh, it'll be it'll be fine. It'll be, it'll be fine. But yeah, I think, yeah. I think, I think webcams probably have a finite life. I think, I don't think the optics can go on forever. At some point, they're just going to stop working, I figure. And, we found the limit with that one. So, yeah. Anyway, your your camera looks beautiful as always. And you have a new mic, I see. I know. I got the... I like when you start stroking fun. your face. Like, your mic is your face. You're like, hmm, yes. Mm. <laughs> don't, no, don't, I, uh, don't, don't. Don't. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, no, I, uh, I, I've i been working a lot lately, and I decided to spoil myself, so I got this Audio-Technica AT2020, and I got a Yamaha AG03 soundboard that I have no idea how to work. Uh, it's got so many knobs and buttons, I'm just like, plug this here, because these match up, and then and I have turn this dial. Sense, so, uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, Not you sound great. On there. You sound great. Thank you. I mean, I, I, I still, I mean, I, I'm supposed to be the person that does the YouTube stuff, and I still use a Yeti that's dented, and I cover the dents up with stickers, but it sounds fine, so I'm like, I'm going to keep this, I'm going to keep this till it dies, and I'm too broke to fucking bother with that. Yeah, but uh, I do. I, I actually thought you had one of these. Uh, no. I think you had a Yeti. My, uh, like, so literally, like, you sound great like, too, so. Mine's, mine's a Yeti, but I make the effort to, like, turn all the little knobs to balance it right. And I'm like, that'll do. But it's the story of this Yeti is I bought it used, right? And it literally had scratches and dents all over it. And that's the reason that I have all these stickers over it. It's not because that, that's... Hmm. The, and the stickers over it started becoming my, like, weird cyberpunky neon aesthetic I go with. So, like, it sort of inspired all that. So this Yeti is responsible for a lot of this shit, really. 
So, you know, ah, just, I mean, you know. Interesting. Yeah, see, I thought it was just like, it just, I thought it no, just, you were matching no, the aesthetic. I don't but try. It just, it's natural. All, all see, the it's, things so I do. You're the natural just, hipster. Yeah, you're I, the rare unicorn I, of hipsters. I, I sent just out a tweet, the, I sent out a tweet the other day. I use that facer app to apply the hipster filter on my own face, and it's literally the same. It's just my <laughs> face. I'm like, I don't know what this means. I don't know what this means. <laughs> so, you know, I'm just, just going to go with it. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, I, I, uh, <clears throat> I wore a Weird Al Yankovic t-shirt to work the other day, right? And can you believe most people I encountered didn't know who Weird Al was? How do you, like, what? Like, I'm going to assume that most people that you work with are somewhere around your age or maybe, like, a little bit younger or older. Yeah, yeah they're all like, yeah, they're like, ten years. we've got a good range, 10 years in either direction, right? And most people was like, who's that, right? But what's brilliant is the people that did know Weird Al was got really angry with the people who didn't. And I start, they sort of started factioning in the office. And I thought oh, I was shit. slowly starting a war, like the Weird Owls <laughs> versus the not Weird Owls, you know? It was fucking amazing. Um, <laughs> how weird was Al? Pretty fucking weird. Pretty fucking weird. <laughs> it's the answer there. But uh, anyway, we should say hello to chat because we're babbling for long enough. Um, hello to Kasap asked seven five one to offensive polygon lask eighty nine, uh, Lilix Paul, mm, Meander sixty two, and Chris Ware. And there are more people. These are the people that have spoken in chat. So hello, everybody. Also, guys, if you are listening to this and you are listening live, do me a favor and just be like hi in chat. Um, because there's these things that, that Twitch does where it rates you as a creator by the interactivity of your chat, right? So the more of you that hmm. say hi, if I can get to that point, I think it helps me appear on search results or some shit. So, you know, <laughs> I'm just saying, if you're about to be like, hi, <laughs> this is so no. Apparently I need to I'm get trying like... trying to get them analytics. Like, like, I don't care about that stuff. And I know like as creators, I'm supposed to think of weird reasons for people to come in and talk. And I'm like, I'll just tell them what I want and why. Because it's too much effort to lie. It's, it's too much effort to lie. It's like you uh, there. Yeah, like mm, yeah. It's like like my today's. To I think today's stream topic is something like I I, I slapped a kitten. No, I didn't. Why would you believe nice. that? You're a monster. I'm, you know, <laughs> just, something like that. But uh, anyway, Toasty, I'm babbling. I'm very talky today. I'm very caffeinated okay. today. Okay. How are you, Toasty? Tell me about your day. I'm doing well. I'm actually taking a nice chill day. I'm gonna give my dog a bath since I haven't been able to since I got her. Wait, you know, wait, so wait. Is that a euphemism? Terrible. Is that a oh, euphemism? No, it's I'm oh. I'm literally gonna give my okay. dog a bath because okay. she smells absolutely effing terrible. I, um, <laughs> imagine if that's a euphemism. My dog smells terrible, I'm gonna bath it tonight. What the fuck would that mean? It's like Spyco from the fifties. <laughs> <laughs> So you still got. It's like I feel like you kind of don't want to know what that would mean. Wouldn't it be well, weird you if you like you bath it and it turns out you've actually got a white dog? Interesting. That would be very interesting. You're like, or like, shit, could you it's imagine a cat. if it was a euphemism and then you washed it and then you ended up, it's like, oh my god, it's like blue or like a different color. It's like, ah, it's a dog. <laughs> it's <laughs> Yeah, do you, all right, all right, Pepsi Polygon it just wants does to one know. Of those Pokemon things yeah. where it like blinks back and forth, and then it's just like, <laughs> oh, it's now it's a dog. It's like, oh my god. Do you, uh, Fancy Polygon wants to know: <laughs> Do you get in the tub with the dog? Uh, yes, actually. Really? Uh, what? I found that what? over over the uh, over the course of my life of having dogs, I found that the easiest way of bathing a dog is to just put a bathing suit on and just get in the shower, and then just turn the shower on, and then clean the dog. And then clean yourself and then dry the dog off. You're a pervert. That's 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 the mo I don't like that's whenever I first started doing it, I was like, man, this is kind of weird. <laughs> like, I'm, you know, uh, but then I was like, you know what? Efficiency over over overshadows weirdness. Right. Like, he it, says I put just, a bathing yeah. suit on. He ain't wearing speedos. He's butt naked scrubbing his dog in I'm the shower. Totally he's, he's fucking totally not wearing like, anything. I was trying to be hanging. decent for the he's podcast. He's as naked as the dog. Out, so. He's naked as the dog, I, um, man. And the dog's I, I like take the collar off. You it's just, just want to. Like, you want to hope he doesn't add things a sausage, or you're fucked, man. You're. What's <laughs> God. Sausages. <laughs> well, it's like uh, you know, way back in the day when we were like running through the forest, like you know, with what? just like a loincloth. With, what like, sort our of little, childhood our did you have, friend? No, no, no. I mean, I mean, like back in the day, like with, like caveman times, like when when they don't have clothes. Okay. Okay. And they're just yeah. like, yeah, we're naked, and we have our dogs, and then we're just like, yeah, running outside, sausage all a flap, so. Just, I mean, anyway, so yeah, video that games. was yeah. So video games, yeah. We now we got about Arch Toast's childhood, and and these dog scrubbery, just nude, you know, nude, nude, nude dog scrubbing. Running. Oh my god, the title of this week's episode totally has to be nude dog scrubbing. Oh my gosh, okay. we have to have that. Someone okay. remind me after the show, nude dog scrubbing for the title, because I'm going to forget that. 
If I screw it up, I'll change it afterwards. Um, <laughs> uh, Offensive Polygon says, I shared with the dog as well. I wouldn't... Okay. Ah, see? Okay. See? It's, um, uh, it's a thing. <laughs> it's, it's efficient. It's efficient. Yeah, uh, no, what's wrong with Toasty is... Uh, is uh, cameras are shit is what's wrong with Toasty. Don't worry about it, Nasui. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> Most people listen don't, on the audio. Don't worry it's about fine. it. It's fine. I'm fairly sure that most people listen on the audio. Anyway, I don't have any numbers for that, but it's assumed for the sake of this. It's fine. It looks like it's on CRT. It's cool. There's like a security camera. Wait, you're, 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 you mean to tell me that you don't have telemetry on your website? I don't. There's I don't, nothing. I don't. You don't have tracking? I don't, don't track. Cookies or honestly, the only of... telemetry I have on anything <laughs> is YouTube count. I don't track it because mm. really, as I've said, I've said this before, but I'll say it again. It doesn't really matter to me how many people watch or listen. I just do what I do, man. It doesn't matter. You know? It's not really relevant. So I'd rather just not track that shit. Done. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. Uh, anyway, games. You've played Battle Right. Tell me about Battle Right. Dude, that game is awesome. Actually, I think Nusui just popped up. Yeah, and, Nusui's played I it. I think Nusui's also played it. Dude, this game is awesome. All right. So what happened is, it's like, I wanted to stream last night. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and I was going to stream the game Savage Lands, which mm -hmm. also I'll talk about in a little bit. Um, spoiler But for some reason, yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> anyway, spoiler alert. Anyway, uh, yeah. So I couldn't get it to work properly. Uh, I guess I'll explain it again later whenever I talk about it. But um, Captain Hempbeard was in the chat and he was like, yo, you should try this game. It's free to play. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. He's like, do you like MOBAs? And I was like, yeah, I can I can definitely play a MOBA or two. Um, since And then I realized I've actually played a lot of MOBAs. Um, but yeah, so I downloaded it. It was super fast. It's a very small game. Uh, it runs under... <clears throat> excuse me. Um, it runs under Proton. Uh, so And I was using Glory Segrol's Proton. Um, and yeah, it runs perfectly. It's super smooth. And it's just super fast paced. Uh, it's kind of like... I want to say like a bullet hell shooter slash, but like, cause it's not, you know how most MOBAs it's like you right click to move and it's got that mm -hmm. movement scheme. This it's is direct w control. Yeah. WASD are the controls so that you're moving. Like it's just, you feel like more in there. It's like driving a stick shift compared to driving an automatic car. <laughs> I feel uh, like you're, you're like there and like controlling the people. And it's uh, like the buttons just, they all make sense. Like the way that they said it, whoever created the mechanics for this game, like, they're, they're pretty on point. They figured it out pretty well. Like the way, because you use E and Q and R and F to like do your um, stuff, like your your abilities and stuff like that. Like I said, it's WASD to move. Um, and then, yeah, you just, you move your mouse in the direction you want to go and that's where you shoot. So, and everybody has, you know, different abilities just like every other MOBA in, on the earth. Um, but it's, yeah, it's great. Uh, it's super fun to play and it's, oh, did my camera move out of the way? Uh, but yeah, it, dude, it's awesome. Um, I would definitely recommend it. It's very, very fun. Um, it's very, oh shit, sorry. Uh, it's very, it's very loot box centric, I would say. Like everything's like, it. it's on a free rotation of heroes and stuff like that, like League of mm -hmm. Legends and uh, uh, I think, well, no, Dota's all free to play, never mind. So just like League of Legends, uh, where there's like every week or however long it is, I'm not quite sure, uh, there's another rotation of heroes that come on and, you know, you got a couple melee, you got a couple mage or magic users, and then you have a couple of like ranged heroes. But everything's super fast paced. So it's uh, it's very fun. It's very, very fun. Definitely recommend. Okay. Um, as you've knocked your camera and you've moved it so I'm not capturing the green screen, I'm just going to turn off that filter and let people see the real you, all right? Are you okay with that? You're right. There you go. Yeah, I'm okay with there that. The real Did I move you. my camera? What yeah, only there? slightly, but we, it picked up like the edge of you. And I was like, I can't be bothered to fix this. Let's, uh, <laughs> let's, just, let's, just, let's just leave this now. It's, it's not happening. I'm going to see the on. real me. Real you. Ta da. Oh, wow, dude, that was perfect. Like, as soon as I did this, you did that. That was great teamwork, everybody. I mean, you say, you you say that, but the 30 second delay, you know, so you'll probably actually see uh, it late. So, you know, yeah. I mean, I feel like I feel like you've never streamed before. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I because I'm, I'm actually I'm watching it on MPV. Oh, so okay. I'm watching oh, okay. the stream while I'm doing this. So, yeah, it happened perfectly. As soon as I did this, it like I should have snapped. That, uh, that was good. That was good. Good teamwork. Everyone. So <laughs> good. Good job. Good job. <laughs> uh, so the uh, so battle right is is it one of those games where I'm going to play it and then I'm going to spend a load of money and be all pissed off? Uh, I guess you could if you wanted to. Oh man, that handshake worked perfectly yeah, too. No, Good right? job. Yeah. Um, 
But uh, yeah, no, I guess you could spend a lot of money on it. I've spent way too much money than I ever want to admit on Dota. Um, but yeah, I feel like this could be a nice little sinkhole because I mean, dude, it's just so fun to get, uh, so fun to play, and the games are so casual, or they can be, I guess, as serious as you want them to be. You know, it's like, uh, but it's not like it's, you're not like trapped in a game for like 45 minutes. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, where Dota is like some games can just last forever. And also like, you know how in Dota you kind of know or League of Legends, like within like the first 10 or 15 minutes, you kind of already know who's going to win. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> whereas this, you can totally come back because uh, it's best of like it's not best of three it's whoever reaches three first and there's like little orbs in there that don't do all kinds of stuff that i have no idea what they all do and stuff like that but they appear and you get like shields or like little buffs or like health or stuff like that so you do that and then you kill everybody within the the arena and like i said it's it's just it's super fast paced so the rounds are really quick uh and it's just not it, it, you can come back like super fast like you can be down by three and then just totally come back uh because you know they were just a confident or I don't know. It's just it, things can turn really quickly. So it's cool. It's, cool. it's a good game. I mean, it's got seventy-one pounds worth of DLC that I've added to my cart, so that's yes. fine, right? <laughs> I didn't mean. I literally I clicked the wrong that. button. I was like, "Add to cart." What? No, I don't need to do that. Um, yeah, seventy-one pounds worth of DLC. What the fuck? Battle Royale Ultimate Fan Pack. What the fuck's the Ultimate Fan Pack? Um, so yeah, it's, it's got a lot of yeah. So it's got outfits and stuff. So it's a bit like Doge, which is like here's a bunch of cosmetic shit. Yeah, it seems like it's all just basically cosmetic stuff. Um, I got like a player icon and some weapon and like a skin for one of the heroes. So, um, but yeah, I mean, I, I I didn't spend any money. Had a pretty yeah, good time for like almost two hours last night. Yeah, they made Blood Rain Champion, Bloodline Champions. I remember this game. This is a game I remember. This is basically a slower version of, of what you're saying. The Battle Royale sounds like, but it just was like ignored when it came out. It was completely bloodline ignored. champions. Yeah, I never heard of it. Yeah, it's uh, it's, it's it's from what I know about battle right, it's like just a slow version of battle right, basically. But um, yeah, oh. it, it it came out a little bit too early and just was just fucking ignored. Um, I did. I did when did it come this. out? 2011. Does it say 2011? Oh wow! Yeah, Holy cow. yeah, but it's just the same. It's the same game. I think it was just too early. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Yep. Hmm. Before it's time. Before it's time. Yeah, literally, but I mean, like, that's kind of good because they've made a second game. Like, you know, the 2017 yeah. Battle Royale comes out, people love it, so that's cool. But I wonder if... Blood I was going to say, yeah, apparently the game is very popular, so... Yeah. But, um, yeah. I can find out. I've got, I've got that extension installed right now. There are 608 people playing it. So that's all right, nice. I suppose, yeah. Oh, so, that's really cool. Yeah. yeah, okay, yeah. For anyone who's wondering, the, 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 there's an extension for, Steve, for, um, for Firefox that does all this shit on the Steam page. It's cool. Um, yeah. Would yeah. it like? Yeah, you'll have to link that to me. I would like to see that. Uh, I should probably link it to everyone. I don't remember what it's fucking called, to be honest. Um, well, let's have a look. Oh. I'm gonna do this live. We're gonna do this live add-on finding. Dun, 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 uh, it's called augmented dun, Steam, right? Dun, 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 dun. It's called augmented, augmented Steam. Augmented Steam. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Uh, there's, there's, I don't know how to get to the page where I find. It. Oh, augmented Steam extension. There we go. Uh, so let's. Uh, everyone who wants that, it's it's a Firefox or a Chrome plugin. Um, yeah, it's pretty cool. I'm a fan. Oh, interesting. It. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Yeah. Uh, so it's turned off. But yeah, um, battle. Yeah, so battle rights cool. Okay. So did you have to do anything to get it to work, or is it literally a case of like clicking it works? Nope. It was literally I installed it, I clicked it, and it was just like, all right, we're good to go. Uh, I didn't see any artifacts or any weird graphical things. The sound worked perfectly. It was just like beep boop, ready to go. I, I you know, and my, you know, my, my favorite, my favorite glitches, the ones you don't notice. I love it when you're playing a game in Proton for like nine hours and you're having a great time like this works perfectly and you're like oh the main character's not supposed to be blue <laughs> you know the one oh, like, thing like, like i those. thought they were going to explain that at some point yeah, yeah you're like, like oh it's just know? not blue yeah i love those i love i love the ones that no one notices it's so this I've, I've not had it happen a lot but when i have it's always entertained me because the very first time i ever played warframe was in proton um well before <laughs> i think it was it was, no it wasn't proton it was um it was wide before proton but it had artifacting so every time you had a shadow it was like pure black instead of being a shadow and i was like what a weird art direction it's like half cell shaded or some shit and it's only then i looked at a video and i was like oh it's broken right okay it's like, oh that's that's <laughs> incorrect but yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's a, like i guess it'd be cool if like i don't know just yeah some glitches are very awesome yeah it's, it's, it's awesome like glitches that improve the game it'd be, it'd be great but yeah, yeah. battle Royale looks like battle Royale's one of the games it looks cool but i'm never gonna try it because it looks like it would just get on my tits 
<laughs> um, it really does. But it looks cool. Like, I think most people, I think lots of people would enjoy this, but I am not one of them. So there's that. But uh, yeah, you should definitely check it out if you look at this thing. It looks cool. But uh, yeah. It's good. It's a nice little MOBA slash, I guess, like I said, bullet hell shooter yeah. type thing. Very fast pass. Yeah. Really fast paced, very casual. Good, good stuff. So. Uh, you know, you know, I've played that's quite casual. You know, I've played. I'm, I'm going I'm to mix things up now and do things in the wrong order. I played some Sims Three again. I'm back on the Sims Three, which oh, is quite, nice. which is about as casual as it gets. I think the Sims. I mean, I can't really think of anything more casual than the Sims Three. But the reason I'm mentioning it is because um, Jumble Sailor in the Discord uh, explained to me the complicated system of how to use uh, how to use mods for it. Um, which is interesting. Okay. So I'm probably gonna make a video um, early next week uh, talking about mods for The Sims 3, in, specifically in Proton, and how to get The Sims 3 working in more depth. Because even though like once it's explained to you, like oh okay, just put it there. But when I was trying to work this out before, I was just told where to put it. I was like, I don't know where this is. I don't know where this goes. Um, and there's Jumble Sailor now in chat. Hey Jumble Sailor. Uh, yeah, so I'm probably I'm, I'm probably going to make a video where I break down for people where to put it and how to do it because yeah, it's not complicated, but it just seems like a lot more steps than there probably should be for this. But basically, you're not looking for the game folder to put the mods in. You're looking for a documents folder that's generated inside the uh, inside the Proton prefix, um, which makes things just a little yeah. The, the face you're putting is what okay. I did. I was like, what? Okay. Well, well, yeah, because I was just assume that you like would take some of the folder and like yeah, you know, me too. It's got different assets or whatever, and you put it right into the game folder. But yeah, that's yeah, very no, interesting. Don't. No, you don't. Yeah, you have to. You literally go to the go to the what is essentially the wine prefix. Find the my documents folder. Find the Sims folder inside the A folder, and then put things in a very specific naming scheme in there. Um, that that's how you do it. But yeah, it's 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 so yeah. I mean, it's great once it works well. Once you've done it, it's like yeah, it's fine. It's done it. And then you have to delete some cache files, start the game, and your mods fire up. I put on all the mods I could find at first. Like I put every, nice. I put fucking everything on there, right? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, this is not the game I want to play. So now I've rolled back to basically nothing. Um, but I know how to do, it, which is cool. I'm using the, the one of the things The Sims Three has is it has a, I say a bug. It's got a design flaw where everything it ever renders stays rendered essentially. So like everything it ever does, like if so, if a car hits a lamppost on day one, that'll be there on like day ninety three. That car will just be there against that lamppost unless someone sorts it out. So what this game, what this does, it's called I think it's called Error Trap and or Overwatch. There's these two mods: Error Trap and Overwatch. And what they do is they just like go, you don't need that, yoink. That was pointless, yoink. And it's like another thing's like if you t if you go in someone's house and the Sims and turn a radio on, and then leave, that radio just stays on. So the, the game logic is running to make that radio work, even though it's not being rendered anywhere. So all these mods do is just go, I'll just turn that off at midnight. Which is fucking great. Jeez. Yeah, really basic stuff. Actually, but, I just yeah. feel like that's like so horribly inefficient. Like, yeah, I it is. Really well, what happens is... I think about game coding, but... Well, no, well, what happens is when you start playing it, it runs great. And then, like, if you play, like, like you play 40 hours of The Sims and then... All of a sudden, it's really like shit. And you're like, I don't know why. And it's just because the game's got all this random shit happening that you don't even know about. It's like, oh, great. Just shit's happening. Um, so, yeah, these mods sort out. And I would say, I would go as far as saying, after seeing them in operation, they're basically essential. Like, they're, they're basically what you need to do. Um, yeah, they're, 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 they're the sort of things that's like, once you've, once you've got it running, you won't want to go back. So, yeah, I'm going to make a video about that anyway. But The Sims 3 is great. Don't buy it at full price. Never buy The Sims 3 at full price, right? It's $24.99 at full price. It li according to this plugin thing, it literally goes down to £3.74. So, I, yeah, yeah, don't do that. Well, yeah. I just, I don't know. The Sims it's is no, not my game. I've tried oh, to play man. it a long time ago. I played 1 and 2. Uh, I mean, they were pretty fun. I played with, like, my cousins when I was a lot younger. Uh, we would all just kind of chill and make a like whatever. Uh, but yeah, I guess I just I can't get into it for some reason. It's just not. It's See, I I, I I agree, right? And I I made the mistake of talking to someone who really likes The Sims, right? Um, and then and then from that, I was like, okay, I'm gonna try The Sims again. And uh, I did that, and I went back and I tried The Sims again. And by playing, by changing the way I play and the expectations, I've like, changed it a lot for me because I just have one That's Sim and. One sim with a cat is all I bother with, yeah? I don't have a family and stuff. And I just, like, she doesn't have a job. She just makes money by writing and painting. Well, painting at first to get money to pay your bills. Then once you've got loads of money to pay your bills, you hire a maid so you haven't got to tidy up. And then you just do, like, do writing or, or guitar. Or, you know, you just do something for fun. And then just, like, paint one picture a day to top up your earnings. You can earn, like, five grand because you painted a picture, which takes, like, an hour in the morning. And then so it Jeez. kind of changes the game where it frees it up so you can just sort of, like, 
do whatever you want. So my sim just like, I want to go, I, I, this sim should go on holiday. I'll just sell five paintings and go on holiday. And it's like, it's, it's fucking great. It's a little bit broken, but it's great. Yeah. <laughs> I just, is this in The Sims 3? Or yeah, this have is you Sims played 3. The Sims 4? Well, I've played the first Sims and I've played The Sims 3. Because I because the, the reason okay. all this happened to me is I played the first Sims when it first came out, because I'm fucking old, apparently, right? Um, I remember playing when it came out. Ah, oh, you go, I'm not that. You're old as well, you fuck. Um, I was super young, though, when I, when <laughs> oh, I played Oh, man, it. I was like 20. <laughs> Fuck's sake. Um, oh, yeah. no, I, was, I think I was like 12 or 13. Oh, man. I've walked this earth for many <laughs> moons now. Uh... <laughs> Uh, yeah, the uh, so like I played the first one and I loved like making gnomes and shit because you could do this thing in The Sims One where yeah. you could you could like you could like craft gnomes out of wood and then just like sell your gnomes. So I had like armies of gnomes and I just used to sell them like all the time and then that'd just be what I'd do. Um, and I loved that. And I spent most of my time just just like wandering around looking at stuff and I had a great time. And then I never <laughs> played The Sims again because Sims One basically got to the point where you just stopped working on modern hardware, right? Um, or at least yeah. it did when I was on Windows, anyway. Um, so I didn't play it for ages, and then I basically not thought about it when Drew started banging on about The Sims 3, and I was like, all right, I'll get it a go. And then, like, yeah, I've literally got, like, 40-odd hours of game time log now. I like The Sims a lot. <laughs> it's just so much fun. <laughs> so, yeah, if, everyone's, if everyone hasn't gone back to The Sims or get a fair crack, it absolutely is a proper game. It's not a screensaver no, like people don't think. Yeah. It's so I'll good. I'll take it a try. Yeah, if it's, uh... and, like, as for The Sims 4, it's like... <sighs> I can play The Sims 3 by hitting play in Steam. Like, I can't be fucked to, to go and mess around to get more Sims, which is basically, at the very best, going to be The Sims 3, but prettier. You know, I'm like, I don't need anything else, so I'm fine. I'll just carry on playing The Sims 3. I don't need Sims 4. I'll be that one guy when The Sims 9 comes out who's like, you should try The Sims 3. It's excellent. It's like, it's still doing <laughs> well, it. Like, I can't imagine, like, what they could possibly... Like, with The Sims 4 and, like, the time period in which it came out, like, it can't possibly... It'd be like... It's like Madden, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, people are going to go pay $60 a year to play this yeah, new man. Madden for no reason when they could have just updated the game and charged you, like, five bucks for it. I, I feel like the same way. They updated for free and been good guys, so... I just feel like it couldn't possibly add too much more to the I mean, yeah, I mean, what can you do? Like, the basic way to The Sims is... You have a sim, you get a job or don't, or you just wander around the town or go, or go to night school or whatever. You, know, you just do some random mundane thing, and it's kind of fun because it's a game. And then, like, and then like you go swimming, you have a party. What are they going to fucking add? What can they possibly add? And the more realism they add to it, the shitter it gets, right? Like, if yeah, they make it super like, realistic... Like, it, it totally like, takes away that. from the point. Oh. <laughs> like, the first thing I do, I load up The Sims 3, I go to options, I turn off the shop, I turn off notifications, and I turn off aging. Because why would you want your sim to grow old and die in front of you? That's horrific, man. Why would anyone want that? So yeah, I don't. I don't. It's have like, to will you, would you like to have the feeling of being immortal and watch everything that you love grow old and yeah, die? No, in front no. Of you? What I want to do immortal is simulator. turn off aging for everyone, so my sim can be an immortal, beautiful princess forever. <laughs> like you know, that's what I, that's what I want. You know, so yeah, <laughs> I can do without it. But yeah, there's. I mean, I I wait. I did wait for Steam sales. I didn't do this all at once, but I did buy all the DLC for The Sims Three, all three hundred and seven pounds worth of DLC I bought. <laughs> um, but I did get it on Steam sale, so I, I paid substantially less than that. I paid more like fifty pounds for for all the Sims DLC, but uh, <laughs> it was okay. worth it. I mean, it if was you worth were it. Look at the numbers and percentages of that, you saved a lot of money. Exactly. You did a good job, so. <laughs> I saved money by buying the Sims DLC. But yeah, the Sims Three is fucking great. If you haven't played it, try it. It's definitely good. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the Cyber says The Sims 4 is hugely different, but in a bad way. Mm -hmm. It's stupid and made for YouTube kids. Well, I might like it then, because uh, I'm a stupid YouTube kid, so... Interesting, you know. <laughs> interesting, interesting, interesting. But uh, while, I've, while I've been playing, like, this shit, you've been playing Savage Lands, haven't you? Is that is that a thing? Yeah, uh, so this? I couldn't... This is a game... I tried to play this game last night. Uh, I tried to stream it, but for some reason it does the same thing that Guns of Icarus does, where when it plays in OBS, like... Some of the things load, but like the background and some of like the textures for the ground and stuff like that just are totally clear. Uh, so you see the background uh, <clears throat> of like my background. Okay. Um, so it's that's only in like OBS though. Um, and then I tried to like capture the desktop and it still kind of worked, but it tanked like everything for some reason. So, but anyway, I was like, man, screw that. And then I played Battle Right. Um, but anyway, I gave it a fair shot uh, today. Uh, and I played it for like two and a half hours. Um, and yeah, I'll have to say that it is very interesting. Um, it's like if Ark and Skyrim had a baby, but 
in oblivion like graphics i guess um so far it's interesting i mean i'm about two hours in i made a character that looks like mark mcgrath uh (laughs) from sugar ray uh the it's very very limited i want to say though that one of the reasons why i actually wanted to play this game so much is because i read one of the reviews on it first of all it has mixed reviews so i was like Mm. you know what Hex is always telling me games mixed that have reviews mixed are great. reviews. The great, there's what you yeah, want. Yeah, like, it's excellent. That means that there's a core community there, and usually I'm like, eh, mixed reviews. No, man, this is the so. problem with Steam. This is the problem <laughs> we're banging on about. Mixed reviews means it's controversial. If it's controversial, it's got something going on that's not normal. If it's not normal, it's probably fucking fun. Sorry, I this is absolutely out. true. No, 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 you, you're yeah. absolutely right. <laughs> So I looked at like one of just I scrolled down a little bit to see like, oh, what are people not liking about this? And what are people liking about it? So I saw one and like it's just this comment that says like, why do you guys even bother to update this game? It sucks so bad. Why bother updating this trash? (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) Yes, please. Oh, man, please (laughs) click on please click on that uh all right so yeah it says why do you even bother clicking on this and the developer goes well first of all thanks for playing my game for an extra 10 minutes to check out the update second of all like there's like a core like player base and blah blah but more importantly you know like it's for people who play the game for more than like an hour because the guy only has like an hour so yeah points like like 0.7 hours yeah (laughs) Yeah. And then the two guys under it, it's just like no mercy, and then it says smoked. <laughs> and I was like, all right. I was like, ah, this. I'll give this game a try. I'll give it a chance. So because it seems like the developers are pretty snarky and cool. I, I so like it's a, uh, it's fun so far. I mean, it's pretty much just like as of right now, I'm only playing the like I guess PVE because there's like a PVP aspect like an arc where you kind of are all on an island or something or whatever the hell this place is and you're all fighting for some reason um but yeah I'm going through kind of what is the story I would assume so it's kind of like I'm on a a quest in oblivion or something like that so except it's just uh, there's arc elements so you can like break a bunch of stuff and you can build there's a lot of crafting and you can break items into smaller items and like they spent I don't know spent a lot of time on the crafting it looks like uh, but it's not like arc where you can place walls and stuff like that. Kind of every building yeah. is just a building that you place sort of, like um, a big hat. so it's, <laughs> yeah, kind of. Yeah. I mean, honestly, that's kind of like what <laughs> the building that I build, that's exactly what it looks like is just a big hat. So, yeah. um, but it's interesting. Uh, I'm definitely going to give it a, a more of a try, um, kind of suss it out a little bit more, but it is, uh, it's kind of glitchy. It's sort of a lot glitchy. Um, can I, can jumping. I just, I just need to take a moment yeah. to read to you one of the other comments here. Um, <laughs> um, um, the devs don't know what balance is, and the game feels okay. abandoned. But the dev replied to this one. Thanks for the post. Can you please tell us more about the balance issues from your uh, from your perspective, based on your thirty minutes played? <laughs> Brilliant. 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 I love it. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, like i said like i feel like there's like a golden nugget in this game somewhere that i just need to find that will make it all just be like all right this is totally worth it uh but right now it's i'm at that very casual learning stage so it's um and that's it's interesting to say the least i yeah. have to play it a little bit more to form a, a better opinion on it um but yeah i mean i think uh airhead has played this game um maybe i'm not sure I think maybe I saw that he had played it like on something, but it's a little older, but it continues to get updates and it's continued to be developed and it is native Linux. It's not running through Proton or anything like that. Yeah. So, oh, it's native uh, as well. But what cool. I, yeah, yeah, it's okay, native. Cool uh, what I was saying is, yeah, there's like no verticality in this game. Like you can jump, but like jumping on top of stuff is that I guess I was spoiled from games like Oblivion and, and like Fallout where yeah. <laughs> basically just like walk up to a wall and press jump button a bunch of times and they'll just like kind of incrementally go up. <laughs> but this is like, uh, no, sir, you're on the ground. Uh, you can, you're you ground man. This boulder. Ground man. Yeah, like if you want to jump on this boulder, it's not going to happen. Like I literally spent uh, like 15 minutes just pressing the space bar as much as I could, like trying to like inch up this rock. Uh, and it would, I mean, it was literally just a boulder that looked like you could definitely just jump up on. So, and there's also no crouching, which I found to be very strange, but yeah, uh, I'll have to give it a little bit more time to form an opinion on it, but yeah, it's an interesting game, at least so far. Okay. Sounds cool. 
Um, right. Uh, hold on. My uh, my my. Uh, oh, I'm getting distracted by my own uh, by my own OBS being weird. Okay, stop it, OBS, idiot. Um, yeah. Uh, sorry, guys. I didn't. I'm. I'm gonna have to figure out one of the things I've got to figure out because uh, the offensive polygon pointed out he didn't actually catch which game was talking about. Um, so I'm actually gonna have to like rearrange my assets to make a room for a little box that says currently discussing. Um, I'm, I'm going to do that for next week, guys, because I've been moved to that mm -hmm. for ages now. Yeah, um, I'd have to also rem then remember to update it. So, yeah. Uh, anyway, <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah. I, I apparently, um, apparently, I have this game. I don't. I've just checked Steam. I do have this game. I don't know why I have it. I don't recall ever getting it. So it must have been the bundle at some point. I think. Um, yeah. Uh, so mm, I must have a look at it because I've never even loaded it. Are there quests I, uh, and stuff? I mean, I, I'm on sort of like a quest right now where I have to go kill some, like, dude. And there's, like, some semblance of a story where, like, these people turned evil or, like, became undead and started attacking. It's pretty generic. Um, I feel like where the real pull to this game lies is in the PvP, probably, and, like, just chilling with your friends and doing something like that. But, like, <clears throat> even because... The game shows you all of the things that you can build in the beginning, and it also shows you all of the enemies in the beginning because you have this like book that you can read. Okay. Um, so it's uh, I mean, I feel like that was kind of missed. Like you should have. I feel like as you encounter things, it would fill it in. You know what I mean? I mean, um, it, it sounds like all the criticisms about this game, even from the people on Steam, seem to be related to the fact it's early access. It seems to be like. A proper early access where they're not just using it as a demo they're trying to make the game while it's in early access because all the things you're saying just sound like you know they could be modded out oh yeah like i feel like this game has a, like the potential to be very good mm. it's just not there yet at all so and they've been working on it for like four years so it's been a while mm. um also i'm not quite sure how much this game is because it was gifted to me um, uh seven pounds 19 pence um so what like ten dollars maybe 10 bucks yeah, yeah. About that, I so guess. i mean uh i don't oh. think it'll go on sale because it's early access yeah i would say maybe hold off onto this until it's a little more finished thanks to my yeah. steam plugin nine dollars 99 there you go steam plugin does nice. that too fucking Very love nice. this plugin i need this in plugin american in like, yeah in real money <laughs> in freedom coins <laughs> Uh, freedom yeah. coins, <laughs> freedom <Madison>. coins. <laughs> yeah uh yeah and also we know it is in australian dollars and i don't know why that's why i care about it. you can buy four but you can buy four pack though um this it's got online multiplayer have you tried the online multiplayer i haven't like i said uh i have only done like the pve or whatever it is like the little story because yeah. i was trying to learn how to play it first uh before yeah. i just went in there and got stabbed to death uh like whenever i played arc the first few times because i was like oh, i'll just go pve and it's just like hey i'm new how are you everyone stab 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 so it's uh yeah, yeah it's got online co-op but it could be fun it's got online co-op and you can buy a four pack so that 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 like you know that's all right that's pretty good that's pretty good. Uh, what I was saying is, I feel like the pull of this game would be the online multiplayer, hanging out with your friends type of thing. So, yeah. okay, I'm in. I'm in. And, and like, as, as Nasui just said, it's seven bucks. Or sometimes games magically appear in your Steam library. Same with me, dude. Same with me. I have no idea, no idea where this game came from. But whatever, it's, it's fine. <laughs> I'll, I'll play it. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, I'll play it. Um, yeah, it looks pretty cool. It looks pretty cool. Um, yeah, I'm not seeing any. I'm not seeing anything that makes me think I shouldn't play it. So I'll have to give it a go. But I do hope the online cult works properly because that could be a lot of fun, a lot of fun. But uh, is there an update history? Uh, yeah, they seem to be updating it. Let's have a look. I would say it was updated very yeah. recently. Uh, so I mean, they're all obviously still working June. on it and still putting the time June. into it. So yeah, I mean, they're saying it looks a okay April. Yeah, it seems to be updated like once a month. But it looks a by like quick glance. Yeah. <laughs> this is like it's even installed i don't know why <laughs> I've been there. the amount of, that's literally happened to me where i've gone i'm gonna play this game i heard about what I've, i own it and it's installed it's like i don't i don't understand how this happens it's like past me was like future you will need this I just imagine Nusui like stumbling in one night after like a night of drinking and he's just like, oh, this game looks great and just like installed it and like he started to play it and then just like fell asleep at his computer, <laughs> woke up the next morning and was like, oh, what's this what shit? This? And he just like, yeah. yeah, he was like, I love this when I was drunk and I hate it when I'm sober. That's how it gets mixed reviews. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, okay. So weirdly, good segue to this. You've played that and I need briefly to talk about Kingdoms of Amalur. The reckoning right mm -hmm. because again 
it's fantasy, it's role play, it's a good segue, right? It's a good segue. Um, guys, right, I've, I've, I've got a problem with Kings of Amalar. As in, I don't really seem to be able to not play it. It's become like what I do when I'm not doing anything else. It's like, I'm not doing anything, I'll just play Kings of Amalar. Like, that is literally where I'm at with this game. I just, I just keep playing. I've got, I've got like, I've got, I've, I've cleared like 20 hours ages ago. And I'm just, I'm nowhere near the end and I don't care. Um, the thing is though, while I'm having, okay, this is the weird thing, right? Because I'm, again, I'm 20 odd hours in now. Let's, let's, let's have a quick look, find exactly how, let, let's find out exactly where I am with it. Um, all right, okay, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm at 22 hours in, right? Um, and I have this problem, okay. As a YouTuber, as someone who critically thinks about gaming in order to inform other people, right? I'm at the point where after 20 hours, I know objectively this game has got one quest go there kill that done right that's the quest that's the only quest it's got that quest five thousand fucking times but that's basically the quest right sometimes it's like go there pick up this flower come back sometimes it's talk to this person it literally means talk to them and you'll kill them right so you're gonna kill them when you get there right this game doesn't like i know objectively there's a lot wrong with it yeah but i also fucking love it right like I'm having a great, like, like the combat is so much fun, like, zipping in, punching people, zipping out, you know, it's so, it's so fast-paced and fun, and it feels like I'm brawling, and, and, and I feel, oh, I feel powerful as fuck, right, so, so when something kills me, I'm like, that thing is really powerful, it killed me, and I'm a god, you know, um, and, <laughs> and, and, and like, yeah, and then, like, what happened is, I'll, I'll, like, beat that godlike thing, and then everything else will be just trash mobs for, like, two hours, right, and there'll be one more thing. I'm like, that thing's good. It must be good. You know, I know it's trash, but I'm having so much fun. <laughs> like, I'm just, it's so good. It's like I'm running around. I'm grabbing stuff. I don't know what, I'm, I want to see the world, even though it's all the same, apparently. Uh, you know, there was a desert area, but there's trees and there's flowers area and there's trees again, you know. Um, and like, the, I've decided just to completely ignore the crafting system because I don't care. Because like, I already feel overpowered as fuck. I don't need any of this stuff. So I've got like 200 grand sitting in my inventory, just money-wise. I just like buy shitloads of health potions because I get trashed a lot. And uh, yeah, and I'm just running through the world. It's so weird to absolutely know something is, a, is you know, a bit formulaic and a bit tired. But at the same time, love the shit out of it. It's such a weird cognitive distance to have. But uh, I would recommend anyone to give this game a go. It's so much fun. It really is. It's, yeah. I, uh, what is the what are the controls like? Is it like an RPG okay, well, or excuse me, like a, like an MMO type of thing? No, or like no, that, it's, or like, is it it's like more God like Arkham War Asylum. Kind of? It's like you've got oh, like, okay, yeah, like yeah. I tried playing a controller, but I just it didn't feel it felt off on control. I don't know why it just didn't quite feel right on me. So you've got like your WSAD to move around. You've got like you, you've got like left left mouse button will attack. And right mouse, but right mouse button will fire whatever skill is currently assigned, right? So whatever skill is currently like was currently highlighted, that's your assigned. Your skills can be like one shot skills, like uh, a force bubble that protects me, or a or, or a, a skeleton warrior that will beat things up, or it could be like you're an active spell that's like shoot a laser bolt. So you have to do a lot of like of like quick flipping around between the skills to get you to get into battle, right? But then like you just yeah right click to fire a fireball. You, you hold you hold down you hold, you tap space when you push in a direction to to zip out the way like a dodge, um, and as, as as you upgrade that it starts becoming more of a slide attack rather than an actual roll out the way, um, yeah. You have got the shield mechanic. We hold out a shield while you're attacking. So like I've got mine built now. So when someone attacks me, I'm a magic user, user staff, right? Someone attacks me, I pull out my shield, right? And then as soon as I attack while I've got my shield out, it uses it puts this like. I don't know, like, well of fire underneath them, which locks them in place for about two seconds, which gives me just enough time to fire up a fucking magical electric ball to shoot at them. And it's like these combinations of the way skills work, fucking brilliant. Like, and one of the other skills I've got is once I've shot my staff, like, I, like my, the fire at my staff, if I, if I hold down the mouse button, it pulls the staff back and starts spinning it, and it does an area of effect to skill. Well, that takes about three seconds to warm up, but it's devastatingly powerful. So if you're in a large group of things that come from all directions, if you can get out of the way long enough, you can, you can, you can like, use this area of effect thing. It's just great. It's just great, but I'm so aware of what's wrong with it, and it's, it's so weird <laughs> to feel like that yeah well i mean it sounds like the skill like uh i mean are, are like the skill trees like super rich you know what i mean like are there a lot of skills that you could learn no as, like, a that's the thing user, like, no it? there's not i mean it <laughs> feels like there is it feels like there is but ultimately if you're playing a magic user you're gonna end up with a very similar build to me because there are a couple of skills that are just mm. fucking trash and you're not gonna use them 
Um, so yeah, we, I, I have a feeling like if you're like a, a sword fighter, you're gonna have one build. Magic users have another build. I don't think there's gonna be a lot in between those builds, to be honest, uh, yeah, because yeah, right. it's not that deep. Um, and that's what's wrong with it. I mean, like that's one of the things wrong with it because it should be that deep. You know, it literally should should be that deep. It should be a game. And that, this isn't multiplayer at all, right? No, it's, it's totally single, single player. player. Yeah, so it was this apparently oh, original. And there's a lot of stories to the get like to the development of the game. You can read on Wikipedia. Um, I linked it when I made a video about it. But basically, the short version is um, some some baseball guy wanted to make a game. His studio made the game or started making the game. Um, it got bought out by someone else. It was originally going to be an MMO with a focus on single player, but then it, things went wrong. They ended up making the game a single player game. It basically bombs or didn't sell enough to recoup its losses. Um, the studio, the studio went to receivership, and now I think Idaho, the like the state of Idaho, actually owned the copyright. Weirdly, I'm sure it's Idaho. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And basically, that's it then. Basically, yeah, that that's what happened. And um, there's a longer version of that with more details and facts that uh, make sense. But uh, yeah, that's the basics of it. And this guy was like, "Oh, I really hope that game would work." And like, "No, dude, it, people didn't like it." But then it seems to have like kept selling really steadily on Steam. Like people are just keep picking it up on Steam because it, it looks great. Mm. Um, and yeah, so I assume by now it's like a nice little cash, like nice little cash cow for the state of Idaho, wherever it is that own it. But, um, Seriously, they're like, "We got potatoes and we got Ambular." So <laughs> yeah, we got I, don't, I might not even be Idaho. I might be getting that wrong, but it's it's, it's definitely yeah. It's definitely one of the states owning it. But yeah, it's... it's. I mean, I can't look someone in the eye and go, this is a great game, because I kind of know it's not. But I can be like, I'm having a lot of fun with this. <laughs> Which is like, I think sometimes better. Like, you know, like it's I'm having a great time. That's oh, all yeah. that really matters. But uh, yeah, 20 hours in, well, 20 odd, 22 hours in, and I'm, I don't feel like I'm, I'm, I'm... I don't feel like I'm at the end yet. I don't feel done with it after 22 hours. I feel like I'm, I'm halfway, if anything, and I'm okay with that. I'm, I'm totally fine with that. Very nice. But uh, yeah, what are it, like the classes that you can choose? I mean, there's no. That's the thing. There's no classes. You start off as just a person, oh. right? And then depending what weapon you equip, um, and then you start like getting skills. Oh. So like, if you want to be a fighter, just pick up a sword and start fighting, and then put points into into that class, and you become that class over time. Like I'm a magic user, so I'm like all about staffs and lightning bolts, and like I just built okay. that by. But you could definitely make a hybrid class. You could definitely like distribute your points between everything. And be able to make a really. That's well what I was gonna say. Class. Is there like, is there a finite number of points that you yeah, can well, get in the game? You level where, up. You get, like, you, you know, get you can points. max out everything. You, well, you get, you level up. You get five points. I don't. I haven't seen any. I mean, I don't want to look too deep because I kind of don't want to know. Like, I don't really want to know how far I got left. I just kind of want to play it and enjoy it. But uh, I haven't got. I haven't really. He hasn't really implied there's any form of level cap. So if you play it long enough, you can probably max out absolutely everything without a problem. I would think. Yeah. Okay. Or if there is a level cap. It's not. It's yeah. It's not. It's not. It's not telegraphing it for me. So you know, it's not. It's not letting me gotcha. know. Gotcha. But uh, yeah, apparently right now, three hundred and fifty-four people are playing a game from twenty twelve. So it's doing all right, man. You know, it's like for twenty fucking twelve. I'm gonna have to check it out. It. I mean, honestly, so, you, know, you yeah. totally just sold me on it. So yeah, yeah. But yeah, like, check it out. One, one of good. the at first, at very when you first start playing, you're like, this is like this is gonna be epic. It's gonna have a big scope and stuff, right? And it has got all that. It delivers on everything it promises, which I like, but. It doesn't do anything annoying. It doesn't bog you down with law because, like, the, the the conversations are like it's just like a series of short tweets and that's it, right? There's no like long drawn out conversations, so that ticks the box there for me, right? Um, the quests are all it's pretty obvious what you have to do. There's no like hidden mechanics. It's like if it says go and kill a dude, just fucking kill the dude. There's no more to it than that, right? Um, and I kind of like the purity of it, you know. I kind of like the fact it's just like it's very honest with what it is and it's not trying to be more than it is. Um, there's just so much of it, like, you know, like 20 hours in, I've, like, cleared half the map off. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm having a great time. You should definitely play it. But I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm becoming, like, a massive, like, like, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, like, preaching this game at this point. It's so good. Um, yeah. It's having a well, it time. seems like, uh, I mean, it kind of looks like Guild Wars too, yeah. except mm -hmm. without any of the, uh, like, multiplayer aspect of it, so. Uh, yeah, it's, I don't know, it feels... It feels kind of like, uh, yeah, kind of, I don't know. It's a brawler. It's definitely like a brawler-style combat, right? So you, you feel like you, okay. you're like Arkham Asylum-style brawling, you know, like Shadow of Mordor kind of thing, but with a lot less depth. But that depth has give it a sense of purity that I don't think other games have, and that's kind of the thing that hooked me into it. And I'm not the only one. I mean, overwhelmingly positive on Steam. You know, I'm not the only one that feels. Yeah, this I was going to say, yeah, yeah. The, yeah. yeah. All the people who can't possibly be wrong. Yeah, so, yeah, or I mean, yeah. they could be, but you know. I mean, yeah, the they, I mean, they absolutely could be. I mean, people play Fortnite, and that's trash. So you know, the 
There's absolutely yeah. people who are wrong. But uh, yeah, sorry. I, I just I needed to get that off my system, dude. I needed to get that out of my system, right? And, and I have to. And I'm I'm going to try not to talk about it next week, even if I'm playing it on the show. I'm not going to talk about it because I feel like I don't have that much to say. Because you can't say that much about Kingdoms of Amalek. It's like you're a dude and you kill shit, and that's you know <laughs> that's the game. But there, there is this ov- there is this overarching plot about fate. But I've just ignored all that because I like killing stuff. <laughs> it's just like I'm like there's a plot happening. I don't care. <laughs> uh, Oh, uh, well, I feel like that's how you generally play games anyway. Not uh, true. It's like, eh. Not true. I played plot this week. In fact, this is a good time to talk about the plot I played. I played Yeast oh, Origin, segues. right? And I not only did I play attention to the plot, I loaded it up for the plot. How about that? Ooh. How about that for our character? Because contrary to the narrative, I like plot in games, but I like, if they need to tell me ahead of time, this is a game with a lot of plot that matters right if they don't if they front load this is a game where you hit a dragon with a, with a sword i'm gonna go i want to hit dragons with swords you know like if i play doom eternal and they start talking to me about the fucking deeper meaning of my soul i'm gonna lose interest i want to kill demons you know um, <laughs> so i i loaded up i loaded up east origin um kai linux uh, who's in the group recommended it pretty hard to me and i was like i'm gonna do this i'm gonna pick this up and he was like story heavy blah 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 you know story heavy there's a lot of characters and i went in knowing what i was getting i streamed it and i read all the dialogue aloud we're doing voices and everything for people right <laughs> badly Very right nice. yeah and i paid attention right and then i got to the brawling and i was happy i wasn't annoyed by the plot once there you go i didn't complain at all because it was front loaded with yo this is a story so yeah very nice ha very nice. proven wrong i felt like i had to stream it because like I, I play shit like uh, off stream i'll play like uh, i'll play like rpgs and stuff and i'll play it i'll care about the plot and i'll be like i'll be into it but on stream i'm like i want to kill stuff because i genuinely think like that makes for a better stream like the stuff where it's just action packed yeah. better stream games so there has become this narrative that basically people think i can't read um so i'm just like no i'm proving you wrong guys so uh, i play that's you- okay i'm pretty sure everyone that watches my streams <laughs> think that i can't read either so I- especially when i play like the away team and stuff like that oh man i did like, that too oh, man. man i i didn't realize that the away team was a visual novel without the visual you know um yeah and that's so all i went in i was like and i got this wall of text and i was like oh fuck I just like I can't abort now. It's like, oh, we just I mean, started the stream. Shit. It's great. Like the, the game is really great. But I do not want to stream a novel. You know. Yeah. I, just, I want to read a novel. I don't want to stream it. But uh, <laughs> it is, it, the way seems great for us and played it. But uh, yeah, East Origin. I, I I played like I played three hours on stream. I was I was I was very happy playing it. Um, it is a very story heavy front loaded. The story is all front loaded. There's a lot of text before you even start. And then when you get into the game. It's kind of like an action RP, like kind of like an older action RPG, because the game's originally from 2006. Then it was remastered in okay. 2012. Um, so it's kind of like, yeah, kind of like kind of action RPG E, that kind of thing. Um, the game doesn't really have health pots, and the boss fights are brutal and wonderfully. This is the thing that really stuck out to me. The boss fights don't have patterns as such. It's not like he will do this, then go here, then he will do this, then go here. The bosses kind of like have a style of fighting rather than a pattern. Um, oh so, that's cool yeah, yeah so like they'll fire and like they might see you coming from a different angle and just choose a different attack so like like the one guy i fought um he was he was like this little red demon guy who like you attack him for a bit and then he did this massive attack and then turn into bats but he wouldn't always just go somewhere else and turn back into a dude sometimes he just chased me for a bit and other times he'd turn into a dude and then instantly like throw fire at me instead so he kind of mixed it up rather than being like scripted which was really good but it also kicked my ass for a good good. 40 minutes like you know i I had to like (laughs) retry a lot um so yeah it's really really good i was really really happy with it but then it did something and kind of made me go oh i've just lost a bit of interest now because the game starts off with this wonderful lush world talk to this tree named rhoda see i remember the name ha fuck you guys um and the, tr- and, you, and, and the plot is kind of like you don't know why like as a player you don't know what it means but you're going to you've grown going to a tower to save two goddesses right um and that's the plot so you kind of don't know why you're doing it and it's kind of going to explain that through story as you go through so again very plot heavy and i'm in this wonderful lush green world and then it, a cutscene happens and i go into the tower and i'm like all right and then i realize the entire game takes place in the tower right uh, yeah, you just like, your face. Then was what mine was. I was like, really? So like, I'm Damn. climbing up this tower, 
Right? And I, I wanted to explore this fucking wonderful world they just showed me with the trees and flowers and skies. And instead, I'm in a fucking grey tower for the next 20 hours. So yeah, that, mm. that made me that made me kind of like, yeah, pissed off's the wrong word. But it's I was, a after, yeah, right? I was like, it's oh. Now it's, this tower's like, it's quite possible there's going to be a rich lore inside the tower, you know? But uh, I'm, I'm still interested because the character's likeable, the story of the world's interesting, like where they're going with it is good. So I still want to play it, but I'm like, what's going to happen here is every floor is going to have a boss fight. So I've got like 26 boss fights before I get to the, the bit where it's going to... Like, and as soon as I realized all the tower, like my gamer brain started working out what was ahead of me. And I was like, this doesn't sound engaging. This sounds annoying. Um, so yeah. Little that's bit. like the I don't know. Let's say that that's the worst is like letting your brain yeah. like your brain beat you. You know what I mean? Like it's yeah. like uh, you kind of like already play through it in your head, and then you're just like shit. Maybe I don't want to play. I this. mean, but like so, talking about though, Kingdoms of Amalur. Just, I yeah. know I've got another forty hours uh, of running through. Yeah, I'm, like, I'm fine with that. You know, but it's just like I don't like exploring. Like exploring a tower is not interesting to me. Like exploring a world yeah. is interesting. Well, I guess I like maybe being tower. super engaged where you're like fighting all the time. Yeah, uh, but and yeah. not having. So maybe it's know. just because you're in a tower and it's just the story all takes place there. Yeah, it's or maybe just, it was just the disappointment of like I you wanted thought to it was see the be world. Big open world. I wanted to see the road tree and I wanted to find out about the world and see what see what was because they left this planet because it was fucked to go and live in this place in the sky and shit. I'm like the world's fucked. Let's find out why. You know, I was excited to see the world and then they're like, nope, fuck you, stay in the tower, bitch. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm, I mean, I'm is a there little bit. Another game? Is oh, is there another game? Or like, is there's recall? like seven of them. There's like, hold on, let me let me let me list these to you. Let me let me give you a little list of oh, these geez. games. So you've got you've got um, Yeast Origin, Yeast One and Two Chronicles, Yeast the Oath of Felagran, Yeast the Dark ne Dark Nepalism. Oh, holy crap! Yeast Seven, Yeast Memories of Cestia, Yeast <laughs> Lacrimosa of Dana, right? Um, and they're just the ones on Steam. There's load on the fucking original NES. Right, there's like, there's like, wow. there must be like nine of these games in total. Uh, but you know what is the weird thing? This is the weird thing, right? Yeet, yeah. This is the weird thing though, right? Yeet. I tell you, even though this game has kind of left me a bit like, ah, you know, like, ah, silent. I kind of, I'm all in the world, right? I'm kind of like, there's something about this setting I fucking love. So I'm kind of tempted to just pick up Yeet 1 and 2 on Steam and just start, start again, you know, with a different world. Because I think this world they've made is just great. I think like they seem to have they seem to have gone all in on story in a way I've not seen since early Final Fantasy games. They're like they're like, yep, yeah, let's that's just what, like, fucking have the world. That's what I was gonna say, is this looks like early, like like as if like Final Fantasy totally overshadowed the crap out of this yeah. game. Yeah. And like because you said it was for like the original SNES, right? Uh, or right? So apparently NES? I'm being told by Nanu who seems to know more than me, started on the master system, not the NES, so either way, oh, it's going geez. back a long fucking way, yeah. you know? Um yeah. So I'm I, yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe it is great, and maybe it was literally over. Oh fuck, that video auto has audio. Um, yeah, maybe it has been like overshadowed to fuck, you know? Because I'm, I'm really interested. I'm really, I'm like, I want to know more about this world. It's such a nice looking place. The little bit I saw before I went to this fucking tower. So uh, I want to know more. And there's one of the newer ones is on Steam for like forty four pounds. Um, yeah, forty four oh, wow. pounds. That looks that's like good. Is that's like sixty dollars. Yeah. It came out last year, yeah. and it's like it looks like uh, I would say it looks like um, oh, it looks it's like that like one. Chrono Trigger, Wii. like the one that would, they made for yeah. like PlayStation Two, I think. Yeah, it looks kind of like, but it's ultra high res. I was thinking of um, what was I thinking of? I was thinking of the other game with the Makanas and the, the the sword on the. Oh, what the fuck is that game called? Anyway, it looks like a, other games, um, <laughs> and it's kind of interesting. So I'm kind of thinking I should either go back and play the first ones, or just like go straight to this newer one and sit and maybe that will you know. Oh. Save me a little bit. This newer one great. looks like the, uh, what is that? The Symphony of whatever games or something like that. Oh, what the heck is that game called? They're like, they, it looks just like this game. Um, yeah. Nope. Can't uh, think. Of it. Sorry. Sorry, everyone. <laughs> Oh my god! Why you know what? I'm, like, gonna, I'm, 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 there's a game it reminds me of, and I don't know why my fucking brain has forgotten the name of this game. Because um, Xenoblade, there you go. Thank you, Doctor. Oh, okay. Fucking right, Xenoblade. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. There you go. My brain was like proper having problems. Like, Xenoblade One, the first one that was on the the Wii and the 3DS. Um, it reminds me a lot of that. Now I played like a hundred plus hours of that game. Um, so I, that's I, what I kind I was of say is like yeah. I wanted to pick that game up, but it so seems good. like it's so. Long, oh, yeah, mate, like you, so yeah. epically I mean, long. I played a hundred hours hard and never hit the end. Like, yeah, no, oh, jeez. <laughs> so yeah, it's long, but it's great the whole time. 
And it, I almost don't care that I never finished it because I had such a great time exploring the world. I don't really care. You know, like like finished it was mm. never a problem. I just want to enjoy the world. You know, but uh, yeah, it's uh, this new this one was cool. So I might I might have to uh, I might have to jump to this one, but I'll wait for it to be on sale because that's a lot of money. Yeah. Tales of Symphonia. That's oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Of. Tales of Symphonia. Yeah, that's a good game too. Yeah, good work, Jumble Sailor. There you go. But uh, yeah, I'm yeah. I want to know more about the world of yes. Yeese or Yeah, East, nice. Or, is it East? Did or you East? say that before I read it? Or before, all right, for the record, I didn't read that. I thought of it in my brain, but thank you, Jumble Sailor. <laughs> no, you stole your thunder, Jumble Sailor. Ignore him. You're the real MVP. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but if, if anyone's interested, here's the, here's the search list of all the Yeast games, you know. Um, feel free to send Damn. them to me. I'm, if anyone wants to send me Yeast games, I'm all in. I want to, I want them. I don't know if it's, if you say Yeast, like E-S or Y-S, like Yeast or Yeast, because I've heard it both ways. I think it's supposed to be Yeast, but people's accents East? make it sound like East, so I don't know what's there. Yeah, I'm not sure on the side. I'm not like, sure saying like, like, like gyro or like gyro, like those you know those like lamb meat sandwiches. Like a, a gyro <laughs> yeah. Now who says yeast? Oh, he says Y dash S. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna go I think yeast. We should, yeah. yeah. I, mean, I think we should matter. listen to Nano. No, I'm Nanu, saying are, like yeast. the stories connected, <laughs> or is it like Final Fantasy where they're just not all like they're all? Oh, good question. Yeah, yeah. We need to know. Like, Nano, like tell us. Big story. Tell us, Nano. Tell us. Nano, yeah, I Nano. I feel like even though like the combat's great, and I feel great, and again, playing on controller, you hit A to attack, B, your B to attack, A to jump. You know, you, you you like it has like proper like one to one controls. Breast. I I feel, um, I feel like I feel like I'm more there for the story than the great gameplay in this case, which is weird for me to say, mm. but uh, it really got me heavy. It got me hard. So. Yeah, I think when I finish, when I uh, <laughs> yeah, say how you want. Um, when I, when I finish, it got you hard. Yeah, it got me hard, man. It did, it did. It got me hard, like literally. I was, you know, under the table. It was scraping the bottom of the desk. That's it, you know. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, yeast. Yeah, I'm gonna say I'm gonna go with yeast until I hear otherwise. Hard and heavy. Thank you, Polygon. Hard and heavy. But uh, <laughs> when I finish Octopath Traveler, I'm I'm probably going to come back around and start again on these yeast games because yeah, even though Yeast Origin hasn't hooked me the way I hoped, I'm I'm all in on the conceptually. I'm all in. I'm all in on the concept. So yeah, absolutely. I'm gonna add all of them to my wish list and just like Scissor on sale, grab them all. So yeah. Um. Anyway, speaking of games, should we move on to the newsy section, or do you have anything to add? Uh, no. To the news. <laughs> he was like, oh, I'm not going to really think about this one. I'm really think about this one. Okay, so Forbes are running articles about Linux again. Um, Forbes says... Interesting. Yeah, well, that's what I thought. Forbes say, um, these Windows 10 versus Pop! OS benchmarks reveal a surprising truth about Linux gaming performance. Now, it's not fucking surprising to anyone that actually uses Linux, right? Um, it is surprising to the readers of Forbes, maybe. But uh, on some games... Linux Pop OS specifically is getting higher frame rates than Windows, and on other games, it's not. Which you know, let's face it, it's no shock to us, is it? Some games run just as good. Yeah. Some games run worse. Some games run it's better. Good. You know, no, yeah. No, I don't think it's a surprise. Like I just would like to point out really quick. Like I love how your camera has is like slowly dying. Oh like, yeah, it's it does just that. Yeah. Slowly getting darker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And more deep fried. Yep, does that. Does that. <laughs> yep, yep. Um, it looks like when I first turn it on, it's fine for like two minutes. It's great. Uh, the frame rate, <laughs> I don't know if you noticed this, but the worse the image quality, the higher the frame rate gets, um, which is really weird. I don't know what causes that. If I knew anything about electronics, I could probably fix it, but I don't, so I'll throw it away. Um, <laughs> yeah. It's the diodes. <laughs> It's, it's the diodes. That's what that's like. That's what people say and they don't know. It's like people who do cars go, have you checked under the hood? <laughs> it's the diodes. I don't, you know, we don't fucking know. Um, <laughs> that's that's the most professional like thing that you could just say. I think I feel it's it's the <laughs> diode transistor. It's, like, it's like in the nineties when you mess with Windows PCs and you go, I think it's an IRQ problem. Like no one knows what that means. <laughs> Nonsense. No one fucking knows what an IRQ is. Fucking IRQ might be a bit of dust in the bottom for all we know. Uh, yeah, anyway, uh, yeah. So like on F one uh, twenty eighteen, um, on F one twenty eighteen, uh, Windows scored sixty four frames on this particular setup, which is in which is in here, and uh, Linux got sixty eight. And then the, the biggest disparity here, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, Windows got sixty two, Linux got fifty one. So there's another low one. So they're all over the place, which is what we know. I mean, we know this, right? But the, the one of the things I thought was really interesting about this article. Was not the was not the the disparity between runs and how Linux was, but it's 
they're picking at pop os specifically here right and that's interesting to me because pop os is gaining traction really fast right because everyone who uses it says how great it is across the board no one's got a bad word to say about pop os right and now forbes are using a saying like literally saying windows 10 versus pop os they're not saying windows versus linux they're saying windows against pop os or versus ubuntu which yeah. is all like yeah. really i feel like ubuntu would have been the, the the choice there but see like this is i mean obviously this is all conspiracy shit that i'm about to say and not like super conspiracy but uh like this is you got to think this is in forbes magazine look at the, think of the people that are reading forbes magazine uh i mean i guess normal people do as well but like these are people that are like hey money uh so <laughs> Like I, I feel like after Ubuntu was like, "Hey, we gonna cut sixty four or thirty two bit out," and then Pop OS stood up and was like, "Hey, Fuck we can you. keep that." And then it says, to, "Yeah," and this had to like, as far as like investors, who I feel like is the main focus group of Forbes magazine, uh, you know, they're basically looking and going like, "Oh, who's gonna be the next big contender in in this 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 yep. niche little world of there?" So this is basically Forbes speculating that I feel. Pop OS is that they feel Pop OS is going to be the next Linux gaming distribution. So I I agree with that conspiracy. because well because Linux <laughs> Linus Tech Tips, which is a mainstream uh, gaming like tech enthusiast channel slash gaming channel, um, they've started using Pop OS for all of their benchmarks for Linux and oh, stuff. Oh. Yeah, um, and Level One Techs with the Wendell that everyone literally everyone I talk to in Linux loves Wendell, right? Um, he's he said a lot of nice things about Pop OS, right? And the reason seems to be that they're just doing, they're just taking Ubuntu as a base and just improving it. So if you take a good quality yeah. base and improve it, you end up with a better product. It's simple as that, right? So yeah. they're actually at the moment they've got a better <laughs> product. Than Ubuntu. Yeah, <laughs> because they're not changing anything drastically. They're just going, here's the Ubuntu, but we fix this shit for you. Um, we made it look pretty out of the box. We put your graphics drivers on the disc. You know, we, we've we, we've made it nice and easy. And I think that I think Ubuntu haven't realised how that extra like that extra mile has taken them a long way. Um, but I've been oh, yeah. Well, I mean, I feel like Pop OS has found themselves in because I mean, don't get me wrong, it's owned by System76, which has a ton of money. Yeah. Uh, but they also don't have like they ain't got that Ubuntu money. You know what I mean? So they don't have the power to be like, well, we just gonna do whatever we want. So yeah. Uh, so they have to kind of, you know, at least see choose what their the fights. Yeah, wants and try to pick to them fights. to that. Yeah, yeah. So, and also, I completely agree with Linux Paul on both the things that he said, which would Pop OS would be fine. Pity about GNOME though, and also uh, Pop OS, they're not very great about sending things upstream. Like when they fix it, uh, what was that one story? I'm pretty sure you can think of it better than I can, Linux Paul. But there was one story recently where, yeah, they fixed something and then just never sent it like upstream to be fixed for everybody else. So it's kind of shitty, but. And then I... also, like, I'm a little turned off by Popped OS because of, uh, like, they, they, they said that they were going to make that totally open hardware, the Thelios computer, and then it ended up being, like, not that at all. Like, <laughs> so, and it was also stupid expensive. So, anyway, I, I won't mean, get too into that. But, yeah, I'm a little burnt by uh, them. It's a smidge. I mean, so. I agree with everything you just said, right? But I would, what I would say is um, the upstream thing, that's the sign of a company that's new to this. And they are. They've said themselves. I mean, they're mm. pretty new to the. They're not. They're not used to being a distro maintainer, right? They probably they probably didn't even occur to them to share their code back. Um, they probably will in future. And I would give. I'm gonna give them the benefit of the doubt. If they turn out to be dipshits about it, that's a different conversation. But they're new to this. It's a new OS for them. It's entirely possible they've got more going on than remembering to feed that back. It might not be high on their radar. So what? Yeah, I know you put in the you put in the red hat face right there. Look, the red. <laughs> <laughs> yeah no I, I mean i agree they should they absolutely should give back but i don't want to pound them for that when it could just have been an oversight like i thought bob was doing it i thought steve was doing it i don't fucking know how do we do that i don't know how to do that you know it could just have been one of them um uh they fix it they never say upstream and they put a snarky note in the release notes see paul that snarky note is what sends it over the edge right but um yeah I do think we should give them the benefit of the doubt they're growing into this they're new to this and yeah. as much as it's not right and i'm not defending it but if you're a new distro and you can fix something and then you're the only one with the fix, it might be worth keeping hold of that for a little while, you know? I can see why they do well, one thing that I wanted one thing I wanted to add to that really quick is that I man, I don't like I don't want to say this because I'm not hundred percent sure, but I'm pretty sure that one of the newest guys that works for System76 is one of the guys that used to work for elementary OS. Um and they like I feel like they're kind of like I mean I don't want to talk shit on them, but no, I, I guess they're pretty cool. But no, yeah, they're them. just basically like 
yeah, like elementary OS is basically like trying to be the Apple of uh, like yeah. Linux, I think. Um, and it's just like I feel like it wouldn't be beyond them to be like. Just gonna hold on to this one for you know, just maybe like a month or two. Yeah, I mean, like uh, I can. To, I'm not defending. Little, get that little competitive edge. I, to make it clear, I'm not defending them doing that, but I can say I can see why they would do that, and I'm not saying they are doing that. Yes, but I yes. can totally get yes, from a business point of view why you can have that fixed for just long enough for it not to get into the LTS, just long enough for it not to get into Ubuntu's next release. You know, I can see the business decision why you do. It's not open source. It's not how we do things. But they're a company, which is one of the reasons why you probably shouldn't use a company backed distro. Just saying, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I, I, as for as for elementary OS, I literally have no patience for them. Ever since they pulled that shit, where they made it look like you had to pay for their distro on their website. Yeah, because you, know? you know what? That was bullshit right there. Because like, first <laughs> totally off, if you want to charge for your that. distro, that's fine. Charge for your distro. No one gives a shit, right? But making it look like you have to pay. What are you trying to do? Most people are going to go, fuck you and close that page, right? Or people who know it's what? a Linux distro are going to go, oh, I don't have to pay. What are you talking about? You know? <laughs> They're not going to get any money. <laughs> fuck off. Yeah. Yeah. Like, well, because they also did their like app store where it was like they would if you download something from their app store, it would ding you and keep, keep sending you alerts to be like, hey, did you want to support this developer? Like, which I dude, I'm not trying to shit on people that are like trying to make money off of creating content or creating apps for other things like that. But it's like there's better ways to go about that. And especially in this community where, you know, people will spend money on things that they like and believe in. Like it's to send a message that's like and to keep sending it over and over. Like I thought it was like I think it was part of like their thing that was like, hey, if you opened it again, it was like, did you want to support this developer? Like just making sure, bro. So that's yeah, that and the reason for that would have been that they get a percentage of that profit, obviously. Yeah, you know, um, yeah, I, I, I have no problem with it. If, like, if I open an application, it has a pop-up screen. It's like, yo, we made this. You should give us some money, bitch. Right? If it does that once, that's fine. If it does it twice, I can live with it. It does it a third time, I uninstall. Um, is the honest answer, yep. right? Uh, because like I figure out my, my logic is what if it did the first time I was like okay you're right I should give them some money and I go and give them one million dollars right I shouldn't have to look at that pop-up screen again you know ever again so why let me turn it off right let's assume I saw it and I know what I'm doing so yeah, I do have mixed feelings on that but I, again I'm like you I think people should be reminded that these people work hard and deserve getting paid but at the same time I want to use my computer not an advertisement it's you know yeah yeah uh, <laughs> it's time again pay your dues yeah absolutely yeah sublime text does uh does pop-ups all the time also a reason i never even mm. tried pop is that i like literally sublime text's applications that i saw it do that and never used it again so you know it doesn't work <laughs> on me but i also use vim which has never popped up with anything ever literally. oh vim oh. vim yeah i remember when i first met you it was all like vim i don't need no stinking vim <laughs> and now you're all like yeah i do yeah, I do. I love the video. Well, it's like, dude, I, I use it for work all the time. It's just because I even take notes in it now. It's yeah. just, man, I just, it's like, yeah. all right, we're done. What? Okay, cool. Yeah, once you're so. on the Vim train, that's it. You're just there for life. That's it. I mean, I, I also think like you you either learn Vim or Emacs, right? And then you like, you or you end up looking oh, at both yeah. and you like one. Like, I got no problem with people using Vim or Emacs. So I'm not, I'm not going to hate on any text editor. But like, use a proper text editor, you know? Use something that's a real text editor. Something that actually yeah. understands how to move objects and do things, you know? And that, I'm not like, use a man's text editor. I'm saying like, use a text editor that's competent. Because, ne because fucking Nano is not a competent text editor. It's a hole you type into. Anyway, sorry, I'm gonna stop ranting now. I'm gonna move on. Um, I like I like Nano. Fuck off, Nano. I uninstall Nano. The first thing I do, I load up. I uninstall Nano. I don't want to see that shit. Fucking Nano. Fucking Nano. <laughs> nano has no place in the modern world, man. Fuck Nano. People need just to uh, learn. It's to just so them. easy. It just works. No, it's just like it's um, not easy. Once you it, get to the point for with people Vim, with low levels of competence towards use micro. Like, or all right yeah i guess so use micro or nano yeah. whatever no micro yeah, is people better. who have lower competence towards <laughs> towards text editors like this it's it's a good crutch you know what i mean because it's like oh look at me i'm using the terminal but at the same time i'm editing text oh, no. so no. <laughs> you know the way we solve this right is as soon as you load up as soon as you load up vim for the first time it goes boom here's a cheat sheet boom here's vim 
figure it out. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's all you have to do. On screen help for them would be great. But anyway, yeah, I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna stop this now. I could literally make a whole podcast about what I'm not, you know what? I may actually make an entire video about why you should use a proper editor. Like break it down for people. So yeah. Yeah, real text editor is chisel and hammer. <laughs> Yeah, right away. Like, no, but I mean it though. Like, okay, just quick point before we move on. Like, when before you know how to use Vim, you need to you need to go. Okay, I've spelt that word wrong like five times. Fuck, I've got to like do a find and replace, or I've got to change every one. In Vim, you can go like you can go boop boop boop, and you change every instance of that word for the whole document. Like boop boop boop, you know, like just one command. You know, it's it, it's fine. Or you, or you go, I need numbers down this whole, like this whole column here. I need, to ins I need to insert something this whole size. You just highlight the whole lot. Hit capital I, insert the one, boom, they're all done. I even use Vim for renaming files. Well, I just name. like... Yeah, because like I said, I, just, I use it a lot for work. So I, I, I like the fact that you can split like you can split mm -hmm. it like uh, in, in Tmux or like Tilex or something like that. And you can split and you can copy and paste between all of them, which just makes yeah. it or so you can, you, you can use You can use um, buffers inside, buffers and splits inside Vim directly. You don't actually need too much. Yeah. Of yeah, anyway. Anyway, I'm going to stop it now. I'm going to stop it now. No, Cybrus. Nano shit. I'm sorry, dude. It's just, it's not. There's just Anyone who uses Nano would be, their lives would be measurably better by learning Vim. <laughs> There's no excuse. Anyway, uh, back to games. I didn't know that. That's so true. That, that's very yeah, true. Yeah, it's true. You just like, you might think it's good, but that's like having a dog because you don't know about cats, you know? <laughs> oh, actually, uh, Toasty, do you know about cats? <laughs> I should, we should have a talk. Uh, <laughs> I have a cat. Steve, uh, Where are you, cat? What? He's going to pull out a dead cat now. Is, 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 is the dog's eating it? No, it's a, it's a real cat. It's, okay. a, it's alive. It's just slinking around somewhere, probably <laughs> waiting to attack. You, so you know? the next item of news after my epic rant here is the, it's a god I've ranted. God, I ranted. Uh, yeah. Uh, Steam Client Update released. Uh, there's been another Steam Client Update release. This is a lot of the stuff that was already in the beta, but they've also snuck through a few extras. Um, I'm not going to talk about the general fixes. You all might have noticed that. But uh, in the Linux bit, one of the big things here is they've um, they fixed bugs that causes Steam to hang. That has been tangible, to be fair. Mm -hmm. They've reduced the download size of the pre-cache stuff because that stuff's been ludicrous. But in fairness... I think a lot of that has been um, misreported downloads because there's a lot of things where it's five gig and you download and it's like boop done. So I think a lot of that has been reporting more than anything else. Um, it's fixed a crash caused by audio cards with no active port set. So it'll choose something logical to be a primary port. Improved detection of some versions of Steam update. Um, and yeah, and it says here, this is the one that's confused everyone. I think this is what caused Linux port some problems today. Um, Plum Steam's input action set to change cursor visibility feature. This allows for games that show a cursor in the menus but not in the game. Um, now, this is what this is. I mean, this is what they've said, but it seems like it's changed the way that Steam handles controllers ever so slightly. And it does look like a few people having problems with this. And this is the one where they see the code they, that what was in the beta and what, what ended up in the main client don't seem to be quite the same. So I am wondering if we're going to see some quick fire updates and that to fix that. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Overall, not. I mean, there's, there's not a lot to talk about there. It's a fucking Steam update, you know? So, yeah, no. But I think it's important people realize that. Where Valve, is our new UI? Where the fuck? They said the it was UI. ready in weeks, months ago. They literally, they're like, <laughs> like a month and a half ago, that was like, it's ready in a few weeks. Like, Valve time. It's like, yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. But I, I'm, I'm excited about the new UI, genuinely. I think it looks great. Like for God, real, I'm stoked for it. It looks, it looks amazing. Yeah. I mean, I know it's very web pagey, but I like the idea. I can go. I want to see all the co-op games that me and Bob own. You know, I like the the searchability of that, and also like, okay, show me stuff we don't own that's under two dollars that matches that criteria. You know, like you can do all stuff like that, yeah. which I really like. Dude, they used to have that. I know, right? Like, I don't remember. Like, yeah, like yeah. they used to have. Like, you used to be able to because I used to filter. Like, whenever I first started gaming on Linux, like I'd be able to filter with Linux like under a certain amount of money, and it was like yes. But yeah. now they were just like, well, no, sorry. You don't yep, get that yep. anymore. But they're bringing it back, yeah. I think. So anyway, yeah. Uh, next yeah. item of news. Okay, this is Valve related again. Um, Valve <laughs> News Network. This is an article of Gaming Off Linux, which weirdly is black in this browser. I don't know what I've done to make it black. I don't know why it's black. But, you mm. know, yeah, weird. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's... Oh, it uh, it's very yeah, strange. I know. I don't know. I've done nice, something. Though. It does look it great. Is it a dark theme? I don't know. It, maybe. I'm not logged in, so maybe it's the new default. I don't know. We should check for that, I guys. I'm not logged in either. Mine's white, though. Crazy. Uh, I'm gonna I'm, hold on. I'm gonna go to my actual browser and I'm gonna type gaming on Linux. There you go. I'm doing it. Who? Doing it. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Hi. Uh, no, it's white on here as well. 
No, uh, I don't weird. know how. I mean, that looks nice. That looks like a good dark theme. Yeah. It's I great. That that. It's great. The dark that tux looks good too. Yeah, it all looks good. Uh, Liam's done something that Liam's done something I don't know how to activate. So you know. Um, anyway, the point of this is not is not the new dark theme on, or maybe the old dark theme on gaming on Lakes. The point here to talk about is that um, the Valve News Network released a video. Now, Valve News Network are not affiliated with Linux. Really, they're not in any way affiliated to gaming on Linux. Um, it's just a video they've released that is interest to us, and it's interesting to us because Valve always released native Linux games, right? So it's interesting. Um, there's been code dug up. Now, watch this whole video. Like, it was, it was, the guy's voice is so boring. Um, but uh, the, God, uh, it's so boring. Yeah. Like, this is so like, I wanted to be like, God, can you, like, yeah. this is exciting news. Can you please, yeah, like, yeah, pick yeah. it up a little bit? Yeah. He's like, he's just so dull. And he starts showing screenshots of folder names and stuff. So, to cut this short, it down to a tweet version, right? And again, the guy's very well informed. I'm not criticizing the guy at all. But basically, there's a bunch of code turned up in an update in a way that makes it look not random. This is not a random update, right? This is this is stuff that's been put in there on purpose. Like Valve are like going, what happens if we tell them this? Knowing people would find it, right? But basically, um, there's a new it seems to be a new iteration of the source engine um that seems like either it's called Citadel or the first game to use it is called Citadel. It's not entirely clear, right? But uh, they're working on something called Citadel. It seems to be a newer version of the of the source engine and that's the news essentially that's what we know right he talks for seven minutes to tell us this <laughs> but that's what we know um and it does appear that the assets have the assets have been knocking around they knocked around a while like a good year ago um the word citadel knocked around in updates for no reason but no one reported on it it was like yeah, it could just be a thing that went in there for an asset or something but then they put it in there again in an unscheduled um dota update and they know people data mine everything, right? So they put this in there. Oh, yeah. I don't believe... I used to think Valve were idiots that didn't know what they were doing. And I'm now at the point where I think they're evil nah, geniuses. this is planned. Everything um, is planned. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, it's not Half-Life 3 confirmed. <laughs> Everyone calm the fuck down, right? Um, the Citadel did appear in Half-Life. And and, and Half-Life Half -Life 3 would have a subtitle. And Citadel but <gasps> Half-Life 3 confirmed? No, it's not Half-Life 3. Um, yeah. <laughs> but uh, it's I mean, they are making... A, I mean, I guess they are making, yeah, Half-Life VR or whatever that is. So, but that doesn't interest me too much. Yeah, so, I don't... But apparently they've been working on yeah. it for like three years. So, yeah. We'll see. I mean, Valve do have slow burn ideas. And whenever they slow burn... That's when they make gold, right? When they rush shit, we get artifact, oh, yeah. right? Um, or we Ugh. get fucking auto chess, right? But uh, the reality, I mean, Ugh. I kind of, I even, I even kind of like that those render lords. I kind of like it; it's pretty good. Um, but it wasn't too bad. Yeah, it was alright. But overall, when Valve slow burn, that's when they're amazing, right? When they think about something and they test it and they play it, and then two years later they're like, I think it's ready. Like they've made, some, they've made like like an amazing like the artists that make this amazing painting and they stare at it for like a year, and then all they do is they like touch up one hair. They're like, it is ready. You know, that's kind of what they're doing. Uh, yeah, but uh, no, um. Nisui, Citadel can't be Torrent 2 because Torrent wasn't made by Valve, was it? Come on. Um, anyway, we'll stop. Uh, in, in future news, Valve buys the company that made Torrent. Oh, I'd, de <laughs> I'd delete my Steam account and start using Epic if that happens. Fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah so it's, it's i mean it's it's the news is like it's kind of interesting now speculation wise um i i have a theory right they said multiple times they're working on something else in the half-life universe right they've said this they've hinted at this i think they're going to time a a game release to go with the steam ui update which is why they've held back the ui update that's what i think is going to happen and i think this is peppering the audience getting people stoked for it um, but yeah, I uh, I don't think I mean I don't think it's gonna be Battle Royale, and I think it, whatever it is will probably be multiplayer. It will probably have item storing because Valve want this. Um, but I would also hazard a guess that it's also gonna have actual story that that takes place in the Half Life universe. I would def I would put I'd be willing to play serious money though that whatever it is will not touch the core Half Life storyline at all. I don't think they will touch yeah, that, that at yeah. all. It'll like, happen the other end of the planet, the other end of the town. It'll happen far enough away that we don't... There's no overlap. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's like, I feel like that storyline is so, like... At this point, it's so pristine that if they ever try to do anything or continue it, that it just... it could never work for them it could never be perfect and it could never be right yeah. so they have no choice but to like do something completely different in the same universe but like yeah. oh, let's do you know yeah. this trilogy over here now so they so. need to make it so that people can't call it half-life 3 
that's what they need to do. That's all they need to yeah. do. I mean, I've said for ages, the best way of dealing with the Half-Life situation is hire a bunch of modders and be like, you get to make a Half-Life 3. You get to make a... And we literally release five games called Half-Life 3 and just let the audience decide which one's canon. Just, just you know, let them go. Let great. modders go wild. That's what they should do. That's the only way they should finish it. Because then they can go, it's not us. You know, like... Or you can go, then it's not canon. Or it is... You know, depending on the action, they can they can spin their, their, their lines, so... I feel like that's the only way they can win by releasing multiple games for people. Well, I feel like that was their that was their good fallback for uh, Dota Underlords. It's yep. just like, <laughs> I mean, this was technically a mod, so you guys liked it, but now you don't. So <laughs> <laughs> that's what happened. With, that's what that's literally what happens with uh, with Dota Underlords. It was like it was released, everyone's like, "This is great," and then a week later, everyone's like, "This is shit." It was it was they, yeah, everyone turned. Like, I mean, I still uh... think it's all right. People turn so quickly on that game. Uh, next piece of news. This is a good one. Okay. Ubisoft exec admits development cost of Stadia is not that high. This is relevant to Linux gaming because Stadia, as we all know, is running Linux kernel. So they're saying here is development for Linux isn't actually that expensive. Now, everyone on Reddit is kind of... Reddit does this thing where they kind of like warp people's comments to mean things that they don't mean, okay? The reality is... Oh, yeah. Stadia will have a bigger Stadia will have a bigger market share than Linux in one day. I would hazard a guess yep. that Stadia will have a big. I would guess that Stadia on pre-orders alone has got a bigger market share than Linux, right? And I'm not I'm not happy about that, guys. But that's the reality, right? Because Google can sell yeah. product, man. Right? I've pre-ordered it. You know, it's like lots of Linux games have pre-ordered it. Lots of people who aren't Linux games have pre-ordered it. Lots of people that don't want to buy a console have ordered it, right? It appeals across the board because it's games on your TV, you know, with no upgrade path. Uh, so, yeah, uh, people... Like, or no, when, no, like, basically no console, no yeah. crazy hardware that you have to have. It's a hardware-free game. And, a small yeah. and, and there's been arguments, yeah. and there's been a lot of arguments as well in the same thread, I'm not going to scroll down, but there's arguments on this thread and other threads about, like, you know, Stadia's not even that cheap because if you put $20 a month away, you could buy a game PC every two years, and it's like... Shut up. No one's doing that. We buy pizza. Fuck off. You know? Yeah, like by the time you've yeah. saved up for that gaming PC that you wanted, it's gonna be two years out of date. <laughs> yeah, come on, dude. No one's no one's doing that. The reality is Stadia's like regardless of what you think about Stadia, the the fact is it, yes, it's Linux, but it's Linux the same way Android is. It's Linux the way that no one gives a shit. Right? Because when they build well, to Stadia, they're building to a single hardware platform, which is exactly the same as building for a PS4. You know, it's there's no difference. Well, I feel like people were like, I don't know why everyone was expecting like, and I say this, I guess, like, uh, not to be a jerk, but like, why was everyone expecting like a handout? It's like you buy like the package deal, you know what I mean? And it's like, why aren't we getting all these free games? Like, we yeah. got this now. We're not, we have the hardware in the package. Why don't we get games with it? It's like, well, you're gonna get some games, but of course, you have to actually buy the freaking yeah. games. So, uh, I mean, but I mean, from a from a development point of view. You are not targeting Stadia as desktop Linux. You are not supporting Linux. You are supporting oh, Stadia. Yeah. That is no different at all from going, I'm supporting the Xbox One, right? It is one platform. Desktop Linux is fragmented, and that means weird shit happens. But so is Windows. I'm not saying Windows is any better, but like develop from a developer point of view, developers want Stadia to be a success because it kills piracy outright, dead in the water. Piracy is gone, goodbye, oh, yeah. right? And they also give you a single platform for all the PC gamers, right? So developers want this to work across the board. And I'm not I'm not here to talk about whether or not Stadia is good or not, right? I'm not saying that, but what I am saying is that work do you know work this out dude you know like developers want this of course they're going to do the extra mile support stadia no it does not mean you'll get the linux version of stadia games that's the reality of it but you can run stadia on linux so who gives a shit you know yeah yeah um but yeah the like stop all the people on reddit that are like taking this out of context and stuff and like like acting like it's more than it is it's not it's don't you know don't fall for it it's, no <laughs> it's not what you think it is yeah i mean uh, yeah yeah and like yeah and like yeah they said like i mean like the only way you can this this makes sense as in like what they actually said was the cost of development state is not that high right if they if you literally said this is my pc right i am running ubuntu lts make your game work on this they could do that it doesn't mean it's going to work everywhere else because they're going to build to that exact hardware platform and that does not mean it's going to work anywhere else at all so yeah don't i mean i think there's a good chance we might stadium might result in more linux exclusives uh, more linux native but i also think there's a good chance it won't make a single bit of difference so yeah let's not get all yeah i'm up. gonna probably go with the latter 
Yeah, so right. that's fine because like Stadia evens it's it evens the ground. Yeah. It means that Windows games and Linux games are on the same footing, same performance, exactly, same experience. So it's fine. Um, anyway, but there. Speaking of that, boom! This is another one. There's a Stadia AMA. The uh, someone from Google who seems to know what they're talking about. Someone on the Stadia project did an AMA. They have been verified by Reddit to be a Google employee, and they have said lots of things. Now, the thing, the the phrase I wanted to pull out here is um, they was asked about a partnership with Valve. And the answer was, great question, my PR go will kill me. We're always evaluating our options to make Stadia a better place for gamers, right? Now, while part of me thinks that's like the most PR response ever, where they're like, we're not saying anything. <laughs> yeah. PR. On the other side of it, why not say no? Like the reality, like, like, like why not? Like if you're Stadia, you're Google, right? You're a big enough dog not to care about other, about about other, you know about other pools to play in, right? You're big enough that it doesn't matter. Why not just go? We're not looking at that at this time. Why say we're keeping options open? Does this? I don't know. Although it's Wallace's generic PR answer, I can't think of why they would bother giving you that PR answer. Why not just say no? You know, I, I don't know. I was, about that. I was literally just trying to think of a way to defend them, but I can't. Like, yeah, it's like, why not just say no? Yeah, just go, That's just no. go. You just say something like, Valve's great, but we're not really looking at that. We're our own thing. Like, or like, go, Val, Valve's great, but like at the moment, we're not looking at partnerships. You know, we're not looking at, uh, at publishing partnerships. Why not phrase, like, why phrase it like this? So I'm not saying this means anything, but I am saying that it's an odd way of phrasing a no. There are much better ways of phrasing a yeah. no. This is this is this is leaving you going, oh, what does that mean? And the fact it's leaving you going, mm, what does that mean? Means that it might mean something, you know? Like legit. It might actually, you know, have put have poignancy. And we all kind of want Valve to to have a streaming service, right? I think we all want that, right? Even yeah. if you don't want to use it. And if Stadia already has the hardware, eh, I don't know, man. It might not be ludicrous wow. to imagine they want to increase their footprint by getting by by integrating Steam or something. I don't know. It just struck me. You know, I read the whole Did, thing today, and it just struck me as being like, I just stopped. And I was like, that's an odd thing to say. It's an odd way to say it. So, yeah, I don't know. I was, yeah, I was about to ask, did you actually read the whole thread? I was there. Did, it, did, did they the ask whole, about the Epic Game Store at all? Did anybody uh, ask about Stadia? There was the a Game lot of questions on the, uh, there was a lot of questions. Fuck, I hate, I hate this Reddit layer. It's shit. Sorry. Um, I read all, I read the whole thing today at, at work. I read the whole thing. I read, I read every question that had an answer. I didn't read questions that didn't have answers, right? Okay. Um, the things that was omitted was they was asked directly about whether or not we're going to see, um, we're going to see, uh, free to play games on Stadia. They were so fucking cagey with that, right? Um, they kind of said, yeah. we'd like to, but ultimately it depends on a lot of factors. They, they did that PR thing where I don't th I don't think we're going to see free-to-play games on Stadia in the traditional way. Um, I think partly that's because it's got a cost of running Stadia and they kind of need you to give them money to give you access to make it profitable. So I don't know. Um, specifically, people asked about Fortnite repeatedly. And that was literally ignored. Like they literally went out of their way not to talk about Fortnite. Oh, right? that makes me so happy. Yeah. Well, I mean, like again, though, right? Like, how are they going to earn money out of Fortnite? Right? Like, they're going to take a cut of Epic's money. Epic ain't going to do that, are they? Like, there's no not need for anyone. Yeah. No. Um. Yeah. Well, I, mean, I gotta say, Epic. Like, I want to say they're probably like they may be fronting pretty hard, but they've got to be struggling somehow and like trying to get money and sustaining it because they're just handing it out. They're like, you get money and you get money and you get money. <laughs> So. Yeah, I think they're in for the long haul. I think they're, I think they're, they're, they're buying exclusives for long term. I think they've got enough money to go for another a good five years. Yeah, I think they've got a long term plan. To be honest, um, but yeah, I, I like they was very like they was not touched, and that's I think that's interesting to me that they didn't touch that. Um, again, I think I think the cost of running Stadia is going to be enough to put off free to play titles. To be honest, because they're going to have to give a lot yeah. of that. Because if you're a free to play title and you've got to give that transaction money to Google because they're literally going through Google server to do it. I mean, you can put your game on Steam yeah. and you could probably negotiate like in-game purchases don't count and only stuff. There's, there's ways of reducing that percentage where with Stadia, there's no way to, there's no way to get around that, right? Yeah. <laughs> also, Cyber's point. Well, I mean, out, do you but... think that they'd be able to have the availability to kind of have their own servers and have Google Stadia be a service that runs on their servers? You know what I mean? That'll I allow them to play, like do give not... the free to play game. I don't think they'll do that. Um, I don't see how it's beneficial to Google to have free-to-play games. I mean, they'll have a lot of cheap games, and they might have an exclusive free-to-play game as a loss leader to get you playing. Um, but I don't know. I don't see... I mean, you got to remember, there's a cost. There's a tangible... Like, granted, the cost isn't tangible. Like, once you've set up the server farm, 
whether someone's playing or not isn't going to make a vast amount of difference. But there's still, like, this is a big cost. I mean, this is going to cost billions to set up, right? They want to recoup that probably as fast as possible. So I just can't see how it's in the best interest of free-to-play developers to be on Stadia. So I think they're probably having things there. Uh, Cyber setting chat, uh, Epic won't be struggling. They've got Tencent money or something along those lines. So yeah, they've got Tencent, yeah. Mm. Yeah, Tencent yeah, I just read right. that. So yeah, they're pretty balling. Yeah, so, so, yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, uh, and the other one, the other one that was admitted is people asked a couple of times about Chromium versus Chrome. That was ignored. It was just like dust <laughs> balls, right? Um, I think the answer to that is I would guess this person who's doing the AMA probably doesn't know the answer to that question. Um, because the only reason it wouldn't yeah. work on Chromium and it would work on Chrome is by design. Like, because Chromium and Chrome are similar yeah. enough that, like, they'd have to design it to only work with Chrome. I honestly don't think anyone's got that answer just yet. Genuinely. Um, I think that's probably why. Um, the, most, the question that, that stuck out to me the most was uh, is a hot dog a sandwich? No, it's not. Um, which is interesting. Um, a hot dog is definitely not a sandwich. It's so much more. Is breakfast cereal a soup? Did you see the link that I put? Uh, no. We the the imager, imager link. Oh, what did you put? That, uh, that, 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 uh, it's the, uh, the sandwich alignment form. Uh, so it'll tell you oh, whether or not. Oh, there you go. That's actually the most, it's actually the most neutral, the <laughs> most neutral sandwich that you can get. Thank so. uh thanks i mean that's 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 important it's important to know it's important to know um yeah i would say cereal is a soup fuck off who cares um would be my answer but you know no one cares about that but yeah all in all i think yeah i think that the, the yeah i wonder i wonder what's going to happen with stadia i'm very much looking forward to a new platform to play on um i really yeah. honestly hope it works in chrome based browsers because i use cute browser i would love to be able to just play stadia in cute browser i don't want to have to install chromium or chrome I wish you know that it would work in firefox yeah. well yeah i mean that's another thing they did in this ama they did say <laughs> again this is vague enough but they've said like ideally yeah. they want stadia to work anywhere like that's what they want that's what google want they're not really it seems like they're not interested in locking it down they just want to get you on the service however they can. The only reason they're pushing Chrome and they're pushing the Pixel 3 is because it's devices and systems they know well enough to, to be able to test and error check. And then afterwards, they'll roll out to more. So that makes sense to me. I mean, that's not an offensive thing to say. No? But yeah. A Jaffa cake is is a cake, not a biscuit, uh, Cybrus. A cake goes... No, a Jaffa... Oh, wait, oh, a cake goes hard when it goes stale and a biscuit goes soft when it goes stale. And Jaffa cakes go hard when they go stale, so they must be cake. There you go. It's always wow. Sword. Science did that. Like that logic just blew Science my whole did. mind. That makes so much sense. <laughs> yeah, man. Grow think of the grow think of the you. lifetime that of the was, biscuit. That was you great. Know? The lifetime of the thing, not just one question, but the lifetime of the product you have to think of. You know, it's like which came first, the chicken or the egg? You know, well, chickens evolve. Uh, chickens are, uh, have the, their roots in lizards, like the same as we all do. Lizards lay eggs. The egg came first. <laughs> Fuck off. That's it. You know? <laughs> anyway, that brings us to the end of X Penguin. Unless Mr. Toasty has anything to add. Unless you wanted to uh, no. talk about stuff. Unless nah. you to nah. talk about stuff. Nah. No? No? That was a horse noise. That was nah. not a horse noise. That was not a horse noise. That was you just going, eh. like, I don't know what that was. James Baxter. I don't, I don't, no, no, stop it. I don't, I don't like it. I don't like it. No. <laughs> And I also still don't believe you've got a cat. So, you know, I think you're making that up there. I do. Uh, let me out uh, here. No, me your, dog, your dog ate it. He's going to get his cat. I feel like I've, I feel like I've overdone it now. Like the next hour of the show is going to be background noises of Arch Toasty chasing his cat and getting bit. Man, that's... that's... <laughs> the only reason they're called cakes is to avoid tax. That's fair. Oh my God, he does have a cat. That cat looks so horrified. That is a fat oh, cat, no, dude. No, no, no. Like, look at this cat's tummy. Like, <laughs> show everyone your fat tummy, kitty. Wow, how did you, how do you get on with having a dog and a cat in the same house? Are they okay? Yeah, they all chill. Like, they're all just. I mean, the dog terrorizes the cat a little bit, but the cat defends herself, and they've reached some sort of alliance. So, wow, okay. they have fun. Cool. They can play. <laughs> if I pick my cat up like that, I need an ambulance now. Like I'm not even joking, right? Uh, if, I, if I tried that, I'd, I'd have cuts down my arms. I couldn't do that. She's just so chill. I think she. <laughs> oh yeah, she definitely like pooped on me. I think a little bit. <laughs> uh, that was. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> that food smells terrible. So, wow, your cat right? barked you. So I'm gonna. I'm, I think that's a great place to end the show. I literally just got shit yep. on. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay, thanks for watching, everybody. We'll be back next week. I'll be back on Wednesday streaming. Arch Toast will be streaming <laughs> at this point. He's got shit on him, so we're gonna cut the show short. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.